hello, 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 welcome, 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 one and all. Hey everyone, it is Fox from Model Making Guru. Welcome to Warhammer Sunday. Now it's been a little while because I've had a bit of a bit of time off over the Christmas and New Year, recharge my batteries and do some other things. So hello, one and all, welcome, welcome. Sorry I've not been around for a bit, but it is Warhammer Sunday. It's that time of the week when I sit down and I crack on with some good old Warhammery goodness, or in this case, the Bane Blade. The enormous Bane Blade, we're cracking on with this and carrying on with this. That's what we're going to be working on today. Uh, as usual, let's get all the nonsense out of the way first. Shout out time. Uh, first and foremost, shout outs to all the people that make my content possible. Uh, well, first of all, actually, before all that, Happy New Year. Hope you all had a good Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. Here's to 2021, not sucking absolute butt cheeks like last year. Yes. Has anybody written the date wrong yet? I have. I've put 2020 twice now. When I've been writing stuff, it's, it's not good. Yeah, I've done it twice. Anyway, yes. Big shout outs, first of all, to my patrons and channel members, my patrons who became patrons by going to model making. No, they didn't. That's the wrong address. And they give a website address. Then they went to patreon.com slash model making guru and became lovely patrons. Uh, or you can become a channel member by clicking the join button under any one of my videos. Either way, you'll be helping this channel survive. You'll be paying my wages, keeping me in food and lights and electric and stuff and making everything happy and making everything work. And I'll be able to keep doing this. So thank you massively to my patrons and my channel members who support me directly. And of course, to my corporate supporters, emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.co.uk, your one stop shop. For all your model making and tabletop gaming needs, use the links in the description below the video for those two, and that'll take you to their stores and it'll tell them that I sent you. And again, you'll be sorting yourself out by helping me at the same time. So make sure to use those links. Oh, I'm a little out of breath there. I don't know why. I'm a little out of breath. I'm all unpractised at the live streaming. Yes, welcome one and all. We'll be cracking on with the uh, Bane Blade. Uh, let's have a look and see. I've forgotten what I normally do. And you know, it's been so long. Let's have a swig of coffee first. Um, I don't know why I'm out of breath. It's like I've run up and down the stairs five times, but I haven't. It's very cold today. Well, I'll have a quick look at who is in chat. I've probably forgotten half the things. Uh, yes, I do have the chat here in front of me. Don't forget, of course, if you are watching this, uh, do come and join in the live chat. There's an archived version of the live chat here. It's about a minute behind. But do come and join the live chat. This show is not really about what I'm doing. It doesn't matter what I do on the bench here. It's more about you just hanging out and having a good time with your mates in chat while I happen to be on in the background waffling like an idiot. So if you are watching, do come and join the live chat. If you're watching it embedded in Facebook or Twitter or Patreon or somewhere else, then click on the YouTube icon that's down here at the bottom of the player somewhere. And that will take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. And you should do because it's cool. In the live chat, we have uh, the first person I can see who wasn't necessarily the first person in. I can just, where's me? Oh, come on, iPad. Don't be a spoon. There we go. The uh, first person I can see is Raging Modeler. Who says, look at the wibularity. Uh, Lynn Dipples in. Hey, Lynn. Scale Model Muse. Uh, name all the guys have come over from watching Colin and Dave's stream. Uh, Wendy Hickson's in. Welcome, Wendy. Hello, hello. You can see there uh, that Wendy is a channel member because she's got the little icon next to her name. So she's a lovely channel member. Uh, Reggie Modeler. Uh, I will miss the Sunday streams when I work, when work gets the staff. My day weekend, day off. Hang on, let me reread that. <coughs> Big Burp first. Uh, my day weekend day off will be Saturday and so I'll be working on Sundays. Oh no, that just sucks. You need to change your job, clearly. Uh, we have uh, Reggie Modeler, Scale Model Muse, Welcome Muse. Uh, we have, who else has come in since then? A few people come in. Uh, William Rayborn says, hi, time for some coffee. Oh, don't mind if I do then. Um, um, no sherry this week. It's not Christmas anymore, so I can't be doing sherry now. Uh, Panzer Koenig is in. Hello again to everyone. Timothy Kalako is in as well. Welcome, Timothy. He says he's learned a lesson today. You should, the Sisters of Battle should be painted in sub assemblies. I assume they've got flowing cloaks or great coats and you have to get inside them around the back. That, yeah. Same with um, uh, Skitari and anyone with a great coat. Uh, people with cloaks, if you can't, if you can, anybody with cloaks, if you can do it in sub assemblies, yeah. Uh, who else we've got? B3 is in. Welcome, Steve. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, Russell Williamson, howdy ho, says Russell. Welcome, Russell. Colin at Festa 67's workshop saying, hey, buddy, how you doing? Big hugs. He says, big hugs and waves. Hi, folks. Uh, so welcome to Colin. Uh, Dad, of course, Scaling Models is in as well. Uh, welcome, Dad. Big hugs to you also. Colin and Dave are two of your mods in at the moment. 
They'll keep you safe in the chat. They'll keep you safe and secure and protect you from ne'er do wells and jack and apes. But if they do cross them, if you do cross them in any way, they'll basically burn you to the ground and then fling you into the heart of the sun. So don't don't do that. Don't cross the heart. Uh, we have uh, Space Hamster ZH is in. Uh, said, "Who boy, howdy all. Welcome, Space Hamster." Do, 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 do. Uh, Nine thousand and one ostriches. Who's changed his name again? I like this. Uh, says moistly probing. I can't get close to the microphone to do that. So moistly probing. Uh, William Rayborn, welcome, William. We have who else has come here? Mark Three Bs. Good afternoon, all, and happy New Year to all. Welcome, Mark Three Bs. Uh, we will have no chuckling, Andy. It's the Borton. Why is why is somebody chuck? I don't know what's gone on there. Uh, but Mark Three B says good afternoon and happy New Year to all. I've been writing 2021 since March. Dang expired dates on medicines. Also been writing 2022. Oh, wow. You've just gone completely wrong there, haven't you, Lynn? Basically, it's all gone wrong. Uh, excuse you, Foxy. Yes, I did a bit of a burpage. I read your modeler. I will start teaching this year when the world stops burning and phase out my day job. Yay. <clears throat> uh, Lee Stevenson is in. Welcome, Lee. How are you doing, my friend? Graham McRobert. <clears throat> Welcome, Graham. Time to feed my belly with food. Yes, we need to know the details. Uh, Wayne Haywood says, hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Graham M. Welcome, Graham. Space Hamster. Oh, anyone who knows who I am in the boom hook will be pleased to hear I was able to fix that warped hole piece on my bane blade, but man, was that annoying. Yes, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, now, there was a question earlier on uh, from Timothy. Timothy, you said something in chat that I have to... I was about to jump in and do the typey-typey to, to ward you off it, but uh, I thought I'd do it with words from my face, so actual face words. He does say somewhere... Uh, I'm going to order one of those battery-powered airbrush combos to prime and base my minis. No. No. Just, no. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No. It's far better, trust me on this, it's far better that you stick to rattle cans, but save up your pennies to get a proper airbrush and a compressor later down the line. Please don't buy a battery-operated airbrush. They are garbage you'll be throwing your money away it won't work properly it'll spray like a house pipe or like a constipated badger it'll be horrible it'll give you crap results you'll hate it and you'll think that's what airbrushing is also you know you, you need a constant flow of air and constant power don't don't get a battery operator don't do it if you just just don't in the long in the short term rattle cans are much easier just, just get rattle cans. You find Tamiya primer or your Citadel primers. Whatever you're doing, it doesn't really matter. Just go for rattle cans. It's it's not cheaper in the long in the short in the long term. It's a little more expensive, but in the short term, it's easier. You're not throwing money away. In the long term, you can put money aside slowly to get yourself a proper airbrush if that's what you want to be able to do. Because when it comes to airbrushing, there are no corners to be cut. You either get a, a good airbrush or you just wipe poop all over your model. It's just don't. No. I just wanted to get that out there before you go and spend money on something. Don't do it. Don't do it. Everybody in chat can probably give you more reasons, but just, yeah, yeah, don't, don't do it. There are no shortcuts when it comes to airbrushing. Uh, where are we up to anyway? So that's up to chat. Anybody else come in? I just need to quickly point that out before it uh, got forgotten. Uh, do, 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 spudger. Hang on. Where's my, where's my spudger? One of my many spudges. It's not actually a spudger. It's a dental probe. It's actually not. It's a, it's a sculpting tool. I've got loads and loads of these different shapes. I use that as a spudger for my spudging needs. For all your spudging needs. Uh, no, Timothy. No, don't, says Mayhem. Dad, now I, we need to stop everything right now. Please just take a swig of your drink. If you've got a beverage, take a swig. Everything now stop. Everybody stop what you're doing. Pay attention, because I need to cover my ass on this one. Dad has asked a question. Everybody listening? He says, so what's on your bench and what's in your belly? Folks, what's Guthorm's belly? What's in your bench? What's in your belly? There you go. What are you working on right now? It doesn't have to be a model kit. It could be a drawing. It could be a painting. It could be a sculpture. You could be doing something to the house, good or bad. Uh, it could be any kind of creative thing. What creative thing are you doing right now? And what's in your belly? What have you had for your dinner? Or what are you going to have for your dinner? There you go. 
let's have a look. More coffee in today's mini, says Muse. Uh, with a tank, says Russell. Gray McRobert, no, I didn't open it on a live in case private stuff in the... Okay, they're talking about a message. Uh, Panzaconi says, belly, cheese on toast with coffee, bench the same Canadian leopard tanks from earlier. Yeah. Uh, bench Peggy the Torpedo Bomber Belly Barbecue Ribs for dinner tonight Ooh, Says Ostriches uh, Thy Creator's in says Hey Fox Hey Dad Doesn't say hello to anybody else <laughs> Everybody else can just be grumpy now Only only me and Dad matter to Thy Creator Because we're awesome Mayhem says Probe uh, B3 Steve says Bench has thrown the Lego to one side Out of frustration moved on to How can you have frustration with Lego If it's proper official Lego you just put it together. How? I can't understand what would go wrong. Unless it's knockoff Lego, in which case it's probably, yeah. Mm. But if it's proper Lego from Lego in the place where Lego's made. What, uh, how, is it, or is it just like 8 billion parts and you're bored? Is that, I don't understand how you can go wrong with Lego. Uh, anyway, uh, moved on to a super secret kit bash. Be oh, hello. I like super secrets. Belly was chicken roast with Yorkies, roasties, collie, carrot, sprouts, broccoli, and shuffle. I need some shuffling balls, though. What the hell is a shuffling ball? <laughs> ah, stuffing balls. I don't know. Very quickly, of course, Squishy's here. Squishy's now a permanent feature, along with Guthorm, of course. Squishy's helping Guthorm to... Uh, to read the comments so i've got got the camera sorted out now so you can see squishy and, and they like snuggle because they're good they're good they're besties they're besties now uh where are we up to lee stevenson says bench is a towel fire warrior belly will be a two-person mac and cheese before i go back to behaving yeah um common road junctions in says hail welcome common road junction wayne haywood says bench judges uh belly all the leftover christmas foods i assume judges is judge dread uh, not that you've got a load of like you know high court judges sat there, or if you're in the US Supreme Court justices. Uh, do do do. How she says scaly models. Uh, Zemantic says hi. I just saw your Bandai Millennium Falcon videos. Great channel, great videos. Sub, keep up the great work. Thanks and a happy new year. Well, thank you very much to you as well, Zemantic. Welcome to the show. You might actually get to see me doing some building today. You might not. I'm working on my bane blade. Bane blade. Yeah. It's spawn. It's today is sponsor. Sponsor. Has anyone managed to get the 40th anniversary Gumplers, says thy creator? I don't even know what they are. I must have a look at that. Uh, well, the way this is shaping up work-wise, we could be furloughed for two weeks. <sighs> it says mayhem. It's possible. Um, belly, bacon, butty, bench, judge, dread, judge, dread on lawmaster, says the raging modeler. Cool. Or space marine motorbike. Same thing. Uh, Nim says bacon is a solo drawing of my DD character while I have my rock tumbler going. Is that to make them all soft and round and round and earthy? The only people in the UK who remember a, a whiskey advert from like 30 years ago will get that reference. Yeah, is it to, is it to make them all soft edges and smooth them all round? Is that what it's to polish them all? The rock tumbler. I think that's what it is, isn't it? It kind of gently jostles. I like that word. Jostle. It jostles them around gently and polish. Yeah. Belly is being decided between Arby's or KFC. I've never had Arby's. But I love KFC. That's my answer. Uh, Rich, hang on, lads. I've got an idea. Says uh, Bench one tenth. <laughs> Daily model super chatted. Oh, ten pounds. Thank you very much, Dad. That's very kind of you. Says Happy New Year, Fox. Thank you very much, Dad. That's a super chat. Don't forget, of course, if you are in chat when I start building, I have on my lenses of seeing, which means all that. Will be will be just a blur. You see that? That's what it looked like to me. Blur. See there? If I can hold it up right, be like that. So yes, that'll be a blur. So if you do want to make get my attention while I'm working, please put your comment in big fat capital letters. Or if you want to, you can do like Dad. Do be like Dad. Do a super chat. You just press the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. Pops your comment in a colour box. Does a little animation that you saw, and it also helps out this channel a little bit as well. Thank you, Dad. That's very kind. I'll be big hugs. <coughs> big Dad hugs. Uh, right, where was I in the middle of? Uh, Rich says, one-tenth Italian job Mini Cooper bench leftover nachos from last night. Ooh, yeah. uh, Leon says, donuts and milk for belly and bench. I just got cleaned up so I can now start building. Yes, you can. No more excuses. I'm giving you the... It's not the finger of shame. It's the... It used to be the finger of shame and now it's the finger of put a fire under it. it yeah, so you've got no excuses now, Lynn. I've seen those little kits. I've seen that little stash on your shelves. I've seen that stash of kits. Plenty of things for you to be getting on with now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 
The problem with Lego is the patent expired on the blocks, and because that happened, there's allowed every other maker of things to produce a Lego style kit, says Mayhem. Yeah, and more often than not, non Lego is kind of terrible. I mean, official non Lego, so things like Mega Blocks, is kind of. Eh, it's not terrible, but it's. Eh. I've got the Mega Blocks Arcadia jump ship from Destiny, and it was like. It's all right. It's. It's okay, but it's kind of eh. But yeah, non Lego, like the Lepin stuff and the knockoff Lego, it generally tends to be horrible. Uh, where are we up to? Shoulder of pork on a bed of onions in oven bench. Still is the USS Exeter, says Russell. Cool. Uh, Fox, it's a Technic Land Rover kit with a bazillion pieces and its gears are put together with magic and brute strength and the wheel axles keep falling out. Oh, in that case, Technics, yeah. <laughs> that requires all the thinking in the world, so I can imagine you getting burnt out on that. Graham, his belly is being treated to venison with roast veggies. Ooh, not venison for ages. Bench, Lego Star Wars Land Speeder. You won't have any problems with that. It's a good little Land Speeder, that. Uh, do, 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 do. Somebody asked Lynn, oh, Phil East asked Lynn what her first build is going to be, and she says, you'll have to wait and watch it on my channel. The truth is, I don't know, but I have an idea. Jolly good. I look forward to that, Lynn. Uh, Dad Chat says, Mayhem Model Works. I'll jump forward a little bit, because we need to crack on. Arby's is better, says William. Then there you go, Arby's is better. Uh, Jacqueline Stevens is in. Afternoon, Mr. Fox, and a happy new year. Hi, Jacqueline. Look, look, Squishy's got a place now in my streams. Squishy's got a little home. He hangs off. I've actually got... You can't see it, but my microphone shroud, the sort of soundproofing shroud, it's got holes in it, so I've jammed a cocktail stick into that and it's hanging off that. <laughs> it's the best I could come up with. Um, let's have a look. The Graging Modeler says, I've just ordered my first Orc Army thing, Orc Runt Herder and Gretchen. Oh, Orcs, yes, do it. Orcs is fun. I'm enjoying I probably will end up getting a lot more Orcs. And I might even... I made the terrible mistake of going looking on Forge World at some of the Orc stuff. Oh, mm, giant elephant things. Uh, hi Jackie and Kevin, says Lynn. Venison, mmm, says Muse. That's an awesome set of minis raging, says Phil East. Mm, venison. And Mayhem says Dadbird. Lynn says, mmm, venison, I need to go hunting. <laughs> I'm enjoying the land speeder very much, Fox, says Graham. Yeah, it's a fun little build, that. Right. <clears throat> Talking of land speeder. It's not a land speeder, it's a main blade. Let's get some enormous coffee on the go. Because <sighs> we've got a lot to build today. We've done the turret. We've done the little sort of glasses, it's not really the glasses, glass the glasses plate, but we've done the, the sort of front turret bit, which is a couple of storm bolters, I think they're storm bolters, or heavy bolters. Um, we've done the demolition cannon, which is glued into place, it's fixed permanently. I did debate whether to leave it loose, but this is going to be played on the tabletop eventually when I get my death core army built up, but there's no point having it moving because all the paint that I put on this bit here will just scrape off, there's no point. Now, uh, who was it? Who was having the warped plastic? It was, um, uh, who was it? I've forgotten already who it was. Was it thy creator? No. Who was it? Who had the warped plastic in the Bane Blade? Uh, I've lost it already now. I've already forgotten. Because names and on YouTube and names elsewhere don't match up. Where are you? Who was it? Was it Wayne? No, it wasn't Wayne. Remind me who... Ah, oh, I've forgotten who it was. Anyway. Yes, if you're in the boom hut, which I remind you, the boom hut, the model maker's boom hut, uh, if, the, if the comment pops up. Yes, is uh, my online Facebook group. It's the safest and coolest place for any model makers or even just crafty people to hang out. No bitching, no snark. Do go and join. Uh, put a picture up. Uh, Ray's in. Hey, Ray, how you doing, my friend? Uh, of the his Bane Blade. And it was like that. It was kind of like... It had a sticking up bit like this. It wasn't lined up. It had this bit. It was Space Hamster, that's it. Yeah, he, he had... It was like a... It's kind of like that. This bit was flush. This bit was flush. But here, it was like that, sticking up. Now, I've got to be honest, I've never come across um, warped Games Workshop plastic before. And especially not this, which is only like a 10-year-old kit. It's only a 10-year-old mould. What year is it? 2000. 10, I think, 2009 or something. So it's not like it's an old kit, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible that in the injection molding process, perhaps it got a little bit bent as it cooled off. It's not ever going to not happen, but I've never come across it before. 
Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I, I assume you re repaired it by just heating it a lot. He was asking if anybody can figure out the best way to reshape it, because everything fitted apart from this bit, which it was kind of like... It was... I can't, get it, I can't really obviously get it to do it now. I can barely get the thing to bend in the first place. It was kind of like that, but a little bit worse with a gap. But this bit was flush and that bit was flush. So we were saying, you, you, I mean, if you have to get it replaced, Games Workshop are fantastic for replacing stuff. They just, they're just like, no questions asked, they'll just send you a replacement sprue. But um, one thing I did, we did suggest a few of us was just basically heat it and try and reshape it. If you've got resin, if you make resin kits, that's how you do all resin kits. Everything's warped and misshaped and you have to put it in hot water and then bend it into shape and then let it dry. Polystyrene is a bit different. It's not quite as forgiving for reshaping it but you can do it and I, I linked to my video where i had that colonial viper with two bits that didn't fit and for that it was a case of dipping it in almost boiling water but not quite heating it up and then just bending it back into shape giving it a minute as it cools it locks in place and then just checking it so i assume you did it that way do tell us but yeah it's uh it can be done but it's a pain in the bum especially on thick polystyrene like that which is quite hefty so yeah, it was weird that I've never come across that in a GW kit before, a plastic kit. Um, at least not in a not in a, a kit that modern. An old kit, yes, but not, not a modern kit. Um, I mean, mine doesn't quite, f quite fit flush exactly there, but I don't really mind. It's almost about right. There's a little bit of a little bit of gap there, but that'll be fine. So yeah, I'm glad you got it sorted though. I assume it was just lots of heating and bending and a pain in the bum. Anyway, yes, that was Space Hamster's little nightmare. So today, uh, we have to do lots and lots. Actually, the instructions tell us we have to do two, but I have to do four. Because you may recall, or you may not recall, that I bought, I've obviously got the sponsor sprue that comes with the kit. But I also got the extra sprue, which is the same two sprues again. You can buy this extra sprue. Because you can have up to, theoretically, six sponsons on the side of this tank. The sponsons are these little turrety bits that sit on the side. And we've got a decent picture in there. The little bits here. These little bits that sit on the side, out from the side there, out from the tank, the track area. And you can put them in one of three positions, here, here or here, along the side. Uh, if you look at it on the real thing, you can put them here, here or here. Uh, now with the kit you get two, so you could put them at the front or the back. They kind of look best at the back on the with the two from the kit. I've got the extra sprue, so I can have four. So I'm going to have two here and two here. But you could get an extra extra sprue and have six sponsons, one there, one there, one there, because it's Warhammer. You want all the guns. You could theoretically have six sponsons, which is twelve weapons. But yeah, we're not going to do that. So yes, so we're going to build lots of sponsons today. So let us get cracking. Now, I will say today, um, I may struggle a bit to get a lot done fast. I know I normally don't do much anyway, <coughs> but um, I've got I've got my lenses on. Now, as if you know before, my lenses make my glasses heavy and they push down on my nose and give me the sniffly nose. It's even worse today because the universe saw fit to give me a massive... I'm, I'm, I'm 49 years old and I've got a zit. I know, it's like I'm 17 all over again. But I've got a zit right where my glasses sit on the bridge of my nose. It's just exactly there. So I have to have them push down my nose a little bit, which means they're even heavier and even less stable. So I might be a bit sniffly, extra sniffly today. I do apologize. Anyway. Right, let's get some work done. So now, do we want... Let's have a look at weapons choices. We have many, many bolters. Bolters. Or we have, I assume these are melters and not flamers. I think these are melters. Many, many melters. Now, I don't really know the points differences. I'm sure there's a thing in here. Let's look at the English one, not the Italian one. Canon automatico. Canon ben blade. Canon demolisher. Mitragliatore pres pesante. Missile cacciatore. Canoni laser dequiem d'assalto. Doppio requiem pesante. Doppio lanciaflamme pesante. Uh, cingole d'amantio. 
I don't know what a jingly Dadamantia is, but it sounds good. Oh, the Adamantium tracks. Oh, <laughs> I like this. I've just read this. The tracks on this tank actually count as a melee weapon. That is awesome. I didn't realise that. They have a um, minus two AP and a D3, roll on D3 for <laughs> the Adamantium tracks. That's cool. Um, this model may take a hunter killer missile. Cool. Do we get that? I don't think we get that on the sprue, do we? Uh, extras. Cool. Um, so it's going to be, they're going to be the heavy flamers. Yeah, they are flamers. Not, I can never remember the difference between melters and flamers. Melters are like, they're not fire, but they're like, it melts armor and stuff. And, but the thing is that the melters always look like, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want the flamers because flamers are rubber. Flamers are good for close up. Um, if people are trying to swarm the tank, it can, it can take it. It's not got a lot of range on them there. Uh, heavy flamers. Uh, I don't know what the numbers mean. That's brilliant. It's got an S of 5 and an AP of minus 1. I... Uh, but then you see here, the Twin Heavy Bolters is a 36-inch range, which is pretty hefty across the game table. Twin Heavy Flamers, 8 inches. So really, if I'm going to be playing this, I want my Bane Blade to be as far away from anybody as possible. At least 36 inches. So I can do damage from a distance. Really, if, if I have the flamers on it, that just makes them close up weapons just in case people start to storm the tank. Now, theoretically, if I have lots of far away weapons like bolters, yeah, but you know what? We're going to go for the for the bolters because I also like painting bolters more than flamers. So shut up. I've decided your input was noted and ignored. There we go. So swig of coffee. <sighs> Orc ordered and some lovely Vallejo game colour and Warlord purple because have plenty of green. And yes, I used your ink link, Fox. Thank you very much. There's Reggie Modeler. Uh, Mew says, please stop. Cringe. What are we cringing about? What are we cringing about? Is that my Italian accent making you cringe? He's been 49 for three years, says Colin. Hey, I've been 49 for all the years. Even's name, roll for initiative. Fox now speaks better. That's oh, so it moved. Uh, Italian better than Festa's German. <laughs> I thought my Italian was all right. I didn't think it was that bad. Given the fact I'm just I'm reading it as I'm reading it. I'm not taking time to pre-read it. And I, you know, it's hard to not pre-read the language. Colosso di ciao ciao. Questo modello non subisce la penal. I can see it's hard to read because I don't know the words. Questo modello non subisce la penalità a tiri per colpire, per muoversi e tirare con armi pesanti. Pub ripiegare nella fase di movimento, movimento e comunicare tirare. Io I can't, yeah, I'm gonna stop now. It's hard to read Italian if you don't read Italian. Because I kind of, I don't know, my brain thinks it knows how to say Italian words. And the, de -de -de -de, and the intonation and stuff, but of course I don't really. I'll stop now. Anyway. Nim's doing lots of rolls, but I don't know why. Uh, heavy Flamer. He said Heavy Flamer. You really want me to have Arby's, don't you? Oh, okay, I see. You're talking about food. Okay. Right, so anyway. Uh, yes, I'm going to go for bolters because, of course, I'm going to go for bolters. You people and your flamers, nonsense. Uh, although it does show flamers, but it gives you the option, you see. Right, so it's bolter time. So, let us view the bolter scenario. We have... Uh, these are, I assume, chiral... Do, 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 do. I'm going to make two of these. Does it say times two times two? Okay. Times two now. So let's just get all the bolters off the uh, off the sprue and we'll do some work. Oh, well, not the microphone. A wild Dan has appeared. Good morning, campers. Welcome, Dan. How are you doing, my friend? Hello. Rolling to see where I get lunch from. Yes, Arby's, says Muse. What I would do is I would roll a die and whatever the number comes out, that means Arby's. I don't know what Arby's is. I know what Arby's is. I've never experienced Arby's. I can't say how good or bad they are. But I don't know. KFC's nice. Burgers are better. 
I would imagine. Now, there are two regular bolters in the middle of these bolters. I have to make sure I don't use those because I assume they also for something else, but I don't know what. I don't know what yet. Or, oh no, oh no, oh no, not all. There is no all. It is quite hard to get to. I'm going to try and do it on camera as well, which might be a good start. Let's just snip this sprue here. I'm struggling to get the cutters in, so I'm just going to take off a big chunk of sprue. There we go. That one there. Just like it's out of someone's bits box. There you go. Half the sprue still attached. It is the order of things. I don't want to cut too close to the weapon because uh, I risk knackering the actual plastic of the weapon. I don't want to gouge into it, so I'm going to pop them off with a bit of sprue attached. Maybe. There we go. Now we do get two more bolters here, but these are, I think, for something else. Uh, not for the... <laughs> So it says do this times two in the instructions, but I'm going to do it times four because I've got two lots of sponsors. So we've got that. Uh, then we have uh, two of these little doohickeys here. Anyway, yes, I hope you're all well. Hope you all had a good Christmas and a good New Year, whether you've been working or not. Hope you've had a decent time of it. Uh, who's had snow? We had a little bit of snow yesterday, but like a molecule of it, and it went away. All the all the weather reports and newspapers saying we're going to get a beast from the east, like we did a couple of years ago. It's going to be deep snow for all of Greater Manchester. No, we didn't, and we won't. It won't happen. It will not be something that happens. Got these two things here. But yeah, had a good day at Christmas and New Year. Very quiet Christmas and New Year. But you yeah, know, hey. Can't have people come around, so we expected that. Quality time, not doing work. That's those two. We need these two now. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do twice as many of these spots, and so I'm going to have to do four times, not two times. This may take a whole episode. I may be swearing by the end of it. Now, it has been a couple of weeks since I've done a stream, so I've kind of forgotten all the, all the things. So do let me know if it sounds and looks okay. If you've got any audio or video issues, I'm sure, you know, Dad or Colin will let me know via the text messagings. Have I? Yes. Yes. There we go. Two of them. Two of these. But yes, I hope you've all had a good, a good sort of break over the last couple of weeks. Uh, nothing really to report. No news to impart. I haven't done any more work on the uh, Lehman Russ. Of course, I haven't. I did plenty, but I didn't. You know how it goes. Uh, did, of course, take part in the uh, Christmas special e-models build with Ted and Colin and Chris, and that was jolly good fun. We built our little chibi tanks and chibi boats. Hashtag Team Tank. Team Tank, of course, were far better than Team Boat, but whatever. Oh, those bolters weren't spares. They were uh, the ones that were used on the glasses plate to it. Okay, that's cool. All right, so I've got all four sets of bolters. You can put those screws to one side for the moment. We'll need to come back to them. But not just right there. For now, we have the big cleanup. Let's have a quick look at chat. Uh, I've had KFC, but never Arby's. You will have to eat and let us know how it is. Uh, we don't have Arby's up here. In, I assume they have a few Arby's down south somewhere, but we don't have Arby's up here. Do, 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 do. A bit of snow, says Raging Modeler. I had snow and now all the frosts, says Mayhem. Uh, I think it sent all the snow to me, says Muse. Yay! Is the Revell Viper different to the Mobius or a Reebok version? Asked Phyllis. Uh, in true Revell style, it's totally a Reebok. <coughs> Excuse me. It's totally a Reebok. Uh, it be you know it's a Reebok because it's good. It's a good quality kit. So you think, this is a good quality kit. Clearly it's not Revell. Uh, it's a Reebok, but I have to give them credit. Um, it's pretty much exactly the same, except they do give you a plastic pilot and not a resin pilot, which is kind of weird in the Mobius one. I got a resin pilot with mine. The pilot, it's exactly the same kit, except the pilot looks a bit different and a bit better. 
and the decals uh, in the Revell Viper are vastly superior to the decals in the Mobius kit, which are absolute garbage. And I've never had a good experience with Mobius decals. I have had a bad experience with schmutz on my lens, though. Let me just clean my glasses. Uh, let me get a bit of tissue. Yeah, I've, I've never had a good experience with Mobius lenses. Uh, Mobius, Mobius lenses. Mobius decals. And they are garbage on the Viper. They'll fall apart and rip and tear and horrible. Uh, but you do get some cool, clear ones. But on the, on the Revell version, it's exactly the same kit. Just has better decals but in my case uh, there was some warping on the plastic because it's slightly different plastic the the back of the fuselage was completely warped and i had to just heat it and reshape it so i mean either of them are great kits but if you've got the choice between the mobius and the revel it's, i know it's strange for me to say it but i'd say take the revel because the decals are vastly superior <clears throat> no snow here but it's cold says panzer that's what we've got uh I'm going to get the Paragraphics Photo Etch Kit as the Revell is the same scale as the Mobius, says Dan. It's exactly the same kit. So the Paragraphics set, which I used, will work perfectly. It is literally the same. It's a, it's a rebox. Uh, this came with the Pilot, though, which I like, trying to figure out how to light his helmet. Uh, the Mobius one comes with the Pilot. Although I'm pretty sure when I got mine, it was a separate resin piece, which is weird. Uh, it was a good rake, restored my mojo, and started to fix my mental health, says Raging Modeler. Jolly good, I like that. Um, people talking about dun Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to use those Meng Chibi tanks for my grot, says Raging Modeler. Do it. And whatever you do, don't go on to Forge World and look up grot tanks. Yeah, th there are grot tanks and they are awesome. There is also a grot tank that looks like a battleship, but of course it's small because grots are tiny. So don't go and look at those on Forge World. You really don't want to look at those. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, la, 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 la. That's twice you've recommended a Revell kit, says Mayhem. I know. I know the, the U boats they do, the big the big uh, 170 second scale 7C that I did, uh, and the variations thereof. It's actually a good kit. Some of the upper hull details, like the, the deck guns, are a bit blobby and poorly. You can get third party replacements for those. But the whole parts themselves, actually a good kit, bizarrely. Arby's is a roast beef sandwich eatery. It's air, says Lynn. Already looked at Forge Wheel Grot Tanks. This is where I got the idea. Well, there you go, then. Jolly good. Bane Blade, says Festa. Will it be scratch and sniff, says Chris at Gross Models? Hey, Chris. Uh, I'm going to use the Meng. Oh, we've done that one. Mm -hmm. I didn't think this was the same mould as this was from 2007, says Dan. Yeah, as far as I know, it's just Ravel's normal tactic of taking other people's kits and rebadging them so they don't have to make any effort. Which is kind of what Ravel do a lot of. Which is fine. It means you actually get decent kits from Ravel. Somehow. It's a way for it to happen. But I should, Well, unless they have since redone their own, but I don't know why they would, because the Mobius one was a perfectly fine kit. So I can only assume, it's been a long time, but I can only assume it's the same kit. Let's clean up all the bolters in the world. All of them. All the bolters. And now I said bolters like that, and now all I can hear in my head is uh, belter. You are not inner or outer, you are belter. Damn, that's a good series. Weapons for the belt. Boss man. If you've not been watching The Expanse, you need to watch The Expanse. Although I have to say, I have to say, I'm enjoying the, the latest series, season five, is it? Uh, but because it's so long between seasons, and it's such a complex, convoluted story, I have kind of forgotten who all the non-main characters are. I had to go and look up, uh, I won't give her too many spoilers, but the character that was in prison in the latest last couple of episodes i had to go and look up who the hell she was i'm like who is this woman because i couldn't remember good series man bolta belta 
Doodle doo doodle doo doodle doo. Uh, yeah, so no real, no real news from me, I'm afraid. No updates or anything. No progress has been made on the Lehman Russ as yet. Again, hopefully this week I'll get some filming done because it needs to get finished. Uh, I'm not sure what comes after the Lehman Russ. Uh, of course, I've got to do my big Kshatriya at some point, but I'm going to defer to uh, Collins, who's to be doing his first. I'll let Colin do his Kshatriya first, I think. Uh, I've got my Icarus Vanquisher Forge World tanks to do. I've got, well, I've got to do a quick film of the Orc Jet for a Goblin as well, so that might come after, after the Lehman Russ. But I remember today, after somebody posted a picture up, I actually remembered I've got a Giara Doga in my... Uh, in my uh, in my stash, the master grade Gear Doga. I'm tempted to do that with a with a Borderlands paint scheme. I don't know, maybe. I'm tempted to do. That. It's been a while since I've done the Gumplers and filmed them properly. And I do want to do more Borderlands style stuff because it's a really enjoyable way to paint things. It's a really really fun, enjoyable. And I've been playing Borderlands three a little bit over the break, and it's like. I do like this art style. Being someone who used to spend their evenings drawing comic book style art, ink, ink and watercolours, I have a real affinity for that style. Not cell shading, because it's not actually cell shading. Cell shading is a completely different thing. That kind of like, you know, comic book style. Pen and ink, uh, uh, ink and watercolour style. I do have an effect. And it was fun to do. And it was fun to do the inner frames just using like contrast paints to get that kind of borderlands metallic effect. Maybe I'll do the Gear Doga. I've still got that 160 scale uh, freedom gun to do at some point. It's not the perfect grade though. It's a it's a no grade 160 scale 160 scale freedom. I think I actually got Samuel over at Samuel Decal to make me some 160 scale decals for it. But sadly, he doesn't exist anymore for decals, and I think I use some of them for something else. So I can't say that for sure. But the big, the big challenge with Gumpler, you may think, because you know, I was thinking of doing the Kshatriya in the Borderland style as well, the HD Kshatriya, and it's like the big challenge with Gumpler is. You look at it and you think, right, I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to do the actual color scheme. I'm going to give it a custom color scheme. And that's like, yeah, brilliant, brilliant idea. What are you going to do? And for some reason, I like cut nubs off there, aren't I? Coming up with a completely custom color scheme is like, I don't know why, but it's like the hardest thing in the world. It just, it. You think it would be just simple to come up with a good funky colour scheme for a gun, but it's not. It's really hard to come up with something that looks half decent, which is why when I did uh, my Freedom Gundam a few years ago, I put it to the public vote and said, right, which, which of these colour schemes do you, do you look the best? I just kind of pootled out some different schemes that I could think of. It's just really hard. And even when you look at something simple, look at a simple mobile suit colour scheme, it's really hard to come up with something that looks half decent. So I've been thinking, if I did the Kshatriya in a Borderlands style, what would I do? And at first you've got the kind of, you know, battered junk use universe kind of just generic look of whatever colours. But then I thought, well, no, because the Borderlands style for things like that is going to be one of the manu the gun manufacturers. It's going to be Dahl or Atlas or, you know, whatever, Hyperion or something. And it's Hyperion who are known for their robots. Really, Dahl, but Atlas, Atlas maybe. But it's, it's, it'd be more like you do a branded thing with like a weapons manufacturer branding. But even then, it's like okay, but what colours? What what pattern? What? How do I make it interesting? And it's like, I, it's just really hard for some reason to to settle down to a colour scheme on Gumpler. It's when I used to write music all those years ago. I used to you know have my own little recording setup. I could quite easily sit down at the keyboard and pootle out some um, Vangelis or Jar sounding piece of music. No problem. No problem at all. 
took me a day or two to record it. But ask me to do a simple piece of like dancey club music with a simple drum track, bass, and maybe a lead of some sort. No idea, no clue. It'd be the hardest thing in the world. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest things to do. And it's really weird that. Like, you know, if I, if I said, right, the cachetry is going to be a, a, a two color color scheme with, um, let's say, an off, uh, a just off yellow, greeny yellow kind of color and an off white, pale, dirty white kind of color, something like that. So a slightly lemony yellow with a hint of green, faded yellow and a, um, a bone white kind of. And I, that's my color scheme. That's great. That would work. But where do I put the different colours? Do I have stripes? Do I have curves? Do I have corn? Do I have... It, it's that kind of thing. That I start falling over and getting confused and like, I don't know where to put the patterns. And with the cachetry, of course, you've got the four massive binders. And it's like, do you make them all the same? Do you make them varied? How... Oh. So it's quite challenging just to come up with, even for a simple mobile suit. If I wanted to repaint the Giara Doga, for example, it's like, well, what? Where do I make it interesting? And it's weird because you look at actual proper, you know, Gumpler from the series and the, and you, you see the colour schemes they have and that's the colour scheme it's associated with and you, you, it's always good. But when you make up your own, you're like, oh, I don't know, does it work? Weird. So I might do, I might do the Giara Doga then. I've got to do the, the Waz Bomb Daka Jet. I've got to do that for my friends at Goblin. Got to do that for them at some point. Uh, that might that'll probably be the next thing after the tank gets finished, just to get that done. And that'll be a quick filming job. Maybe I'll do the Gyarodoga, and maybe we'll see. We shall see. I've still got my space battleship Yamato to do at some point. A question of size, but I've got to keep in mind as well uh, the size of these things because right now, because I can't post anything anywhere, I can't sell anything. Well, I've got posting from home options. That's only really posting from home within the UK. So if I'm selling a model, I can't sell it to anyone in the States because it's massive restrictions on what I can you know, post from home. So, and if I don't sell, so if I make something and don't sell it, I've got, I'm running out of space to put things. All my cabinets are getting full. So I've got to keep in mind what I can feasibly keep sitting around. So I might have to start just for the moment focusing on, uh, you know, minis and stuff that I can keep in the skirmish boxes. I call the conquest stuff because a lot of it's in skirmish and transport boxes, so it can just go back in there once it's painted. That's a, a space saving thing. I'll have to get myself a couple of storage boxes from, you know, the what are they called? The easy box company, whatever it's called. Because I can store things in there. And they've been painted I've got to store them in there when I've been built actually so I've got to get some of those goodies I shall have a look at chat in a moment I'm going to put these little frame pieces to the side because they need a bit of mold line goodness I can see a few comments have popped in there for me so I'll have a look at them in a sec just get the knife work on this done first <laughs> but yeah that borderlands color scheme the, the borderlands painting scheme it, it is really fun to do and I can see it in my head I can see how I do it and it, it's actually quite simple it's actually it's easier than doing a realistic paint job actually and enjoyable and it's more in tune with my you know my history of drawing ink and watercolor pen and ink watercolors well pen and ink outlining and watercolor coloring Because I used to, uh, when I was doing comic booky type stuff, before I used mapping pens and wussed out and got mapping pen stuff, it was always, it started off with not brush and ink, but actual nib and ink. So when I was, I was using a proper artist's ink nib to do my outlining, different sizes for different thicknesses of, of lines. And then after a while, I bit the bullet and tried some brush work and kind of got the hang of it. Uh, in later years and then I was quite confident then doing entire inking with brushes it does give a completely different look and feel though to using uh, a, 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 a nib I don't know if nib's the right word basically a, a nib that you dip in draw with 
there's no reservoir or anything like that. It's usually a plastic or some of my old ones are baker like plastic or resin handle with a removable uh, steel or whatever nib. Usually. Yeah, them in the days. Started out doing ink and then colouring with watercolours for that comic book look. And that's what the Borderlands look is. It's not cell shading. Cell shading is complete, completely different. Cell shading is nothing like Borderlands. People think that because you put an outline around something, it's cell shaded. No, that's not cell shading. Cell shading is where you're working on a transparent piece of film. And you're colouring it from behind and you're using maybe one or two colours, opaque flat colours on an animation cell, hence shell shading. Maybe more than two colours, but you're, you're literally, <clears throat> it's like Photoshop layers, you do your outline and then you colour it in from behind with the colour layers reversed. That's cell shading. What Borderlands is, is more like... The, the way you do it, if you if you don't know, if you've never done it, the way I used to do it, you pencil. If you look at your comment box, it's got like, you know, pencil, inkers and letterers. Uh, you pencil in the artwork you want. So you basically sketch it all out in, in an easily removed pencil. All your little lines and cross hatching and little notes and things. You pencil it in, then you ink it with a thin ink out. This is how I did it. Pencil it in. So I draw my character or whatever. Uh, get everything as I want it, lay out what I need where, and then I go in with inks, and I just basically draw out the basic outline of each ink part. Now I don't worry about the depth or of the the thickness of the line. I go with quite a thin line. I just go in with the a fine nib, and I just draw the base. I'm not worried about widening it round the curves. I'm not worried about cross hatching at this point or anything like that at all. I'm just doing the basic outlines with a thin ink outline. You let that dry, uh, give it five or ten minutes, whatever, however long it takes. Uh, and then you go in and you rub out all the pencil work. And you're left with a very thin filamenty outline of whatever it is you're going to be colouring in and drawing. Now at this point, if you if you heard me say in the past that you should never, you should never get stressed out about an, a creative project halfway through because you've got more to do. At this point, if you're doing like a comic book type thing um it looks like absolute garbage it will look like absolute bish every time every single time with no exceptions it will look like absolute butt cheeks because it's this thin weedy reedy outline with no cross hatching of color and it looks like absolute nonsense but you have to fight past this but you have to remember this bit every single time and fight past it so then what you do is you get your watercolors and you build up the colours slowly. Keeping in mind that watercolours are transparent. They're very similar in, in, in the same way that um, the Citadel's contrast paints are transparent, but obviously a lot more transparent. They're more like glazes, like using acrylic glazes. Um, they're very thin, they're very transparent. Your paper's white. So you can't paint a watercolour over a black area, for example, because it just wouldn't work. Uh, and you build up your colours slowly. You still, you still, for the most part, you're limited to a small number of colours, otherwise you'd be there all day doing a proper painting. And you've got to keep in mind you're trying to do comic book art, so you don't need a million different colours. But you've got the option that you can lay down a colour and then lay down another colour over the top, and that will affect it. Um, and you get these nice sort of washed out, not smooth, not flat, colors they're kind of a little bit washed out but they've got some variation to them because they've got bits where it's thicker and thinner and patchier and it's like a random patchiness to it an unevenness and then when you've done that let that dry thoroughly uh, and then you go in with the proper inking once you're happy with all that uh, you go in with the proper inking and what i used to do with that was uh, I would either, in the days when I was just using nibs, I'd just go in with a thicker, fatter nib, and I'd redraw the, the outlines, but you can put further pressure on. As you go around the corner with your nib, you're drawing, as you go around the corner, you put more pressure on, and you, you run it round, and your nib will separate, because it's like a little steel nib, 
like an old fountain pen it's got the little split at the bottom that spreads out you can push it down and spread it out and you get that thicker line you get that nice sort of depth and shape to the line the downside of using a nib of course is that if you're using um paper that's designed for watercolor so it's paper that will allow it to get wet and dry out without going all crinkly it can have a rough texture uh, and sometimes the nib can skip and go and put a little splot of ink out and that's really annoying when that happens you'd have to watch for that use a brush you don't have that problem so you know i would go back and re-ink it all and build up those thick outlines and sometimes when you when you look at comic book art that's drawn by hand not drawn on a computer when you see those lines that go wonderfully from thin to thick and then thin again as they go around a corner and they look fantastic that's not always of somebody going with a brush sometimes it's somebody building that curve up slowly by hand and emphasizing it bit by bit uh, as the time went by though i started to change my technique a bit and i started to use brushes a bit more because the downside of you know uh, ink nibs is just that that they can they can skitter and splot little blobs of ink if they hit a rough patch but, and i was using a page a paper called arch or arches if you pronounce it literally which was pre-stretched watercolor paper which meant you could just literally tape it down to a wooden board get it wet with watercolors and it would buckle up and then straighten out again what you'd normally need to do if you're doing watercolor painting or watercolor artwork like that if you've just got normal kind of cartridge paper or something you you have to you have to soak it and stretch it and then tape it down so it can stretch and flatten out otherwise when you put watercolor on it's going to buckle and it'll look terrible so yeah this paper was very expensive it smelled like wet dog and you've got watercolor on it i've still got some very expensive paper came with rugged raggedy rough uh, edges because it's handmade paper arches or arch it was called but yeah so that's how you do it and you, you, you then go back and build up the ink once the watercolor layers are down you build up your ink layers and by the end of it you know you've done your inks you go around all the outlines you build those up you start putting in the black areas where there's solid black of ink and you stop brushing that in uh, you start to add any cross hatching or anything like that little details you want to include anything and when you're finished you've got this wonderful piece of like comic book art that is that is what borderlands is that's that's the style it's watercolor and ink style now i i figured out quite quickly i just kind of guessed i thought i think i know how to do this i looked at some of the vehicles in borderlands when i was doing george's Cesarbe, and i thought how can i get that kind of look for the metallic parts because there's no metallics in borderlands one and two uh, there's no there's no shiny metals it's all just grays if you look at anything where there's inner workings exposed like if you look at um if you look at a loader bot and you can see the inner frame parts or you look at one of the vehicles like an outrunner and you look at some of the mechanical parts there's no shiny metal parts there might be a little metal shine to it but it's not painted like a reflective metallic they're all painted in just shades of gray and I quickly realized, or I hoped and I tried it, that I could use some of the contrast paint greys over their sort of white spray primer to get that same effect. Because once you put the ink outlines on it, it really makes it look like a Borderlands metallic colour. And it worked, and I'm like, oh, I think it worked. So that's a great way, great fun thing to do. I might even do like a Borderlands Imperial Knight at some point. I'm sure I'll have to at some point. I should do really it seems like a good thing to do so i can't i can't recommend now i know when i did my when i did george's Cesarbi, of course it was a patreon exclusive series so i never really got to give you a proper how to do borderlands paint style the way i do it kind of tutorial so at some point i will do another borderlands style paint job and i will film a proper how i do it tutorial i know i kind of gave you the basics on the uh well uh, well I did do the Achilles Ridge run, I suppose, and that kind of shows it. But I'll show it again, don't worry. If you've not seen it, the Achilles Ridge Runner uh, build. I think I showed it in there, actually. Take it back. I think I showed how to do it in there. Right. Now, this is the bit that goes between the bolters. <coughs> oh, hello, big burp. Coffee swig. I'm very gassy today. I, made, I had uh, when I made dinner yesterday. 
and I've actually realised my moustache is now big enough that I need something to soak up the coffee from the moustache. Uh, I've forgotten about those days. Uh, I made dinner last night and I had a lot of cabbage in that. Yeah, there was much cabbage involved in that meal. Uh, I don't think you can really see these too much between the between the bolters. I'm not going to lose too much sleep over the mould lines. You're going to see basically that line there and this little bit at the top maybe. I'm leaving me to worry about this bit. There's a whole piston on the back here. You're never going to see it. Appreciate the fact they put the detail in, but it's overkill. Have a quick look at chat before we go on the next one. Uh, where are we up to? Paul Di Tommaso is in waves at model makers. Hey Paul, how are you doing, my friend? Hope you are well, dear boy. Uh, are we up to? I've got the sniffles. Uh, okay, we're up to about there. Do 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 do. Uh, I think it was because it was a master grade version car with staticness. Oh, I don't know what we're talking about now. Nim mm -mm. says, me thinks once I learn how to DM, I may post something in the boom asking for players. So hang in now. Oh, cool. Might be good. You hated doing the Borderlands paint scheme, though, says Team Inept. I don't know. I did it first, but once I finished it, it wasn't that I hated doing it. It was uh, on that Cesarby. I enjoyed the actual process. It was more just there was so much of it on the Cesarby that I was getting a bit burnt out. But when I saw the end result, I'm like, you know what? It was kind of worth it. It was kind of worth all that because it, it can get quite tedious doing all your outlines. So it was. It's more just fighting the tedium because it was such a complicated build, that Cesarby. On the Gear Azula, there's like 10 parts of armor or something. It's a lot simpler. On the, on the Kshatriya, it's a lot not quite as complicated as Kit. So... And when, because when I did the the Achilles Ridge Runner, hello Paul, by the way, when I did the Achilles Ridge Runner, it's a small kit that was great fun, and I enjoyed that. So it wasn't so much the Borderlands paint scheme process that I didn't enjoy; it was it was the amount of it I had to do on that Cesarby. I think I'd use it carefully, on depending on the model. If it was a big, massive, complicated thing, I might not do that kind of paint scheme. Uh, Mayhem says, I think it was because it was a master grade Vercar with staticness. Yeah, there was that as well. I had to figure out the static joints and everything else. So it was more that bit that I wasn't that keen on. No, 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 no. Bear death. Don't want to talk about bear death. Hello, Paul. I know that feeling. That's why I grabbed something from 40k as a base. I forgot what I was talking about. It's been so long since I read the comments. I have arguments with the wife as I love minimalist things for the house, but as you can't disguise bad materials or processes under trim, you have to be exact. Music and colour schemes are the same. Yes. I find that I had to learn this really hard piece of music for an exam and I got it no problem. I had to learn a simple piece and yeah, couldn't get it. It's the weird thing. I'll take my hoodie off because I'm too warm now. That's the weird thing though, it's with any kind of creativity, sometimes doing simple things is the really hard bit. You know. I can I can do a complicated drawing of something, you know, of a figure or something, and lots of cross-hatching. If I was doing it in pencil, give it lots of realistic shading and depth and stuff. But sometimes doing a simple ink outline with flowing lines of a very simple thing it can be a lot harder. It's weird. You know, Reggie Modeler says, dinosaurs. Oh, yeah, I've got dinosaurs in my stash. Warhamster tonight says Chris at play again soon though talking about his, uh, his survival games is it you Chris tonight or is it you and Ted I think it's you isn't it uh, paint the Kshatriya to look like a huge flower since it has the massive petal things on the shoulder says Dan hmm. you're saying paint it pink basically pinks and colours nice little pastel colours mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fox you could have a cabinet clearance sale that's still the problem I can't post anything anywhere not right now because I can't go anywhere, so problem. That's that's how I make some of my income is by building things, painting them, and selling them. But I can't go to the post office to post them anywhere because the world's on fire and protecting Mama Fox. So I can't leave the house. Really, I can't go to the post office. So yeah, I can't I can't ship anything anywhere. So I do need to test out Royal Mail's ship from home thing because you can do it all. I need to get myself a little printer to do that, but. You can do labels and stuff from home and they'll collect it from your door, from your porch. That's fine, but it might be UK only. 
and I don't really want to go onto eBay and say, here's this model, here's you know, for this much, but only if you're in the UK, because that's a real pain. It limits your audience, your, your potential buying audience. Uh, cell shading is the legend of Zendel, the Wind Waker. Uh, yeah, cell shading is not so much the outlines, it's the way the colors. So any kind of animation is cell shaded because it's on a traditional animation. You've got a clear piece of film, ink on the top. I went to Cosgrove Hall. I visited Cosgrove Hall. My dad used to know um, Cosgrove and Hall. He used to work with them. I got a guided tour. And it was amazing to me that the, the artist would sit there. A person would draw the frame outlines. I watched them drawing some frames for Ducula. The, the, one guy was penciling in the animation frame. Well, they had the, the basic, the paint and trace department. Um, there was a guy doing the keyframes. He would draw the keyframe. Pencil on tracing paper. Um... Then the, the in-betweener would go in and do all the tweens, the frames in between each one, and do the same thing, pencil them all in. Then basically, that pencil outline would go off to a guy with a great big Xerox machine. This is the early 80s. The great big Xerox machine who would take that pencil drawing on the piece of tracing paper and transfer that onto a piece of clear an, an animation cell, but with the contrast turned up, so it's basically black outline on a clear animation cell. Then it goes off to the paint department where they turn it over and start painting the colours in so that if you've got something, uh, if you've got a circle that needs to be white on this side and then red on that side, what they would do is they turn it over, paint the white bit first because you can't paint the white over red, and then they paint the red bit over the top of it. You'd have to, whatever they were painting, you know what I mean? And it's the same way I do things now when I draw stuff on Photoshop. I use Photoshop layers as animation cells. I'll have the outlines, I'll have the sketch on one layer, I'll have the outlines and different layers of colours and shades and stuff. But it's the same principle. So that's cell shading. It's not the outlines, it's the way it's the colours laid onto the animation cell. So shell shading, cell shading is what a cartoon looks like. Anime style, animation style, you know. Borderlands is basically a watercolour and ink drawing. Because you've got different layers and different textures to the colour. Uh, yes, Borderlands is exaggerated comic style rather than cell shading, says B3. Yes. Uh, hi, Edward. Glad you came back, says Edward. Uh, I've returned from the grocery store, so I'm now here. Welcome, Edward. Never seen Borderlands, says Lynn. Ah, you got a PS4. Get Borderlands. It'll be like two quid now. It'll be like two dollars. Uh, Borderlands is like 10, 11, 12 years old now. The original Borderlands. It'll be like a dollar in the bargain book at your local game store. In Borderlands, it's good fun. It's silly nonsense. Uh, we have an important update from everyone on the jellyfish tank. Uh, update on the jellyfish tank. It arrived scratched and you could not see it until you turned on the LEDs. I am waiting on a replacement tank so I can continue cycling it for the arrival of the squish. Oh, squish. Yay. Can't wait to see your squishies. They were. Uh, bit sucky that you had a scratch on it, but nice to replacing it. I can't wait to see Squishy. I love jelly, says Lynn. Someone has a Space Marine Landspeeder Typhoon for sale. $30 Canadian. Uh, then that's quite cheap. Because $30 Canadian is about what? $40, $50 US? Don't know. Um, yeah, that's not bad. What kind of Squishy is he? And Lena says it's three moon jellies. Cool, I can't wait to see those. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, I watch the NOA Oceans Explorer, and when they do transects of the water column, I follow them as well. Uh, uh, you see the whole bunch of different deep sea jellies, cute and tiny. I follow them, and I follow the uh, EV Nautilus as well. I, I love an EV Nautilus when they do their deep dives, and they have a crew on there literally doing like a live chat. I prefer Nautilus to the Oceanos. They're, they're a bit more personable. I've hung, out, I've hung out in their live chats before now and spoken to the people on the boat. It's great. I was watching live. I spent one day uh, watching EV Nautilus and they were live streaming their dive to the bottom of, um, where were they? They were off the coast of California, but it was still like thousands of feet down. And they were looking at these like octopus gardens. Uh, basically with like just thousands and thousands of octopuses everywhere, watching them all nursing their eggs and stuff. We were just hanging out, and all of us were watching. We were just hanging out in the chat and chatting to the crew in the boat because there's a there's like there's, there's the ROV pilots and there's the other people, the scientists, 
and there's a couple of people on the team that sit there and their entire job is to be like the the, the people that respond to people in chat and the viewers the commentators the narrator we're having a great time asking questions and stuff and then they found uh, a whale fall which a lot of them hadn't seen before they didn't planned on it they're just pootling about looking at you know jellies and octopuses and stuff and uh, hagfish and things like that and a grenadier there's lots of grenadier fish and they came across this whale this whale fall the whale was probably about i don't know 20 or 30 meters long no is that right yeah 10 20 meters something like that 20 30 feet uh, and it wasn't fresh you could, it was skeletonized but there was still a lot of uh, muscle and blubber on the bone so there's all the kind of organisms were there freaking out on this on this on this whale fall and they were going around it like studying it carefully obviously they we're taking lots of samples and things as they're going along but it was amazing because you've got this whole community of you know there was um there's the octopus and i can't remember which species of octopus i think it's um i'm gonna get it wrong now it's the common octopus it's kind of a purple color and it's like muso muso or something like that. i can't remember now anyway it's the same octopus type pretty little purple octopus they're cool uh there were hagfish there were all fish there were grenadier fish all over it there were snot worms the bone eating worms all kinds of things living on it and this whole community's thriving a shrimp there were squat lobster squat lobster everywhere and it was amazing and so i mean i'd spent about i started watching the stream in the morning and i suddenly realized that when they then you finish for the day because they, they literally start the stream when they get on the boat and leave harbor and they just stream all like day after day after day i think i'd sort of watch it for like 12 hours straight this dive it's amazing and it's good because they, they involved you in it they, they were talking to people in chat so i'm asking questions and stuff and mama fox was watching it downstairs on her ipad because I, I got I suggested it to her and she got she got captivated but one of the ladies on the team one of the girls on the team girl she was a marine biologist one of the marine biologists she was completely adorable because her specialty was was uh, sponges her big thing was sponges she's a sponge expert um and she had the most adorable voice and she was totally awesome to listen to and she was dead enthusiastic about it all she was like she was like the most amazing sort of enthusiastic teacher you can imagine and uh but her thing was sponges so at one point she was like saying they were saying what have we seen today we've seen lots of cool things we've seen this and we've seen that we've seen a whale fall and she was like yeah hello sponges and they went oh yeah we've seen sponges she was like yeah whale fall Pfft. care about your whale fall give me my sponges so enthusiastic about sponges and i've forgotten the name i think it's anna khan is her name anna anna khan, amanda khan amanda khan or anna khan and i was like oh she's awesome and I, I watched a little bit of it this year it wasn't quite as exciting this year. they went back to the same whale fall this year uh, and it was a lot less there was a lot less there it was there's a lot less of the bone had you know been eaten away so there's very little remaining now you can still see a big like a a long line of vertebrae but a lot of the ribs are gone and everything else had gone and uh it was weird because amanda khan wasn't on it but like it was the same rov pilot and a lot of the same crew so it was all the voices i remember from like two years before i'm like wow it's just gone back in time two years it was great so i do like the i do like the uh, the okeanos ones but i don't find them quite as endearing as the as the ev nautilus <laughs> yeah i do recommend it and even just things like you know you can watch the stream and for the first two or three hours it's just the rov slowly descending through the water column so all you see is like the, the there's a little bit of the porch where the camera is and just things floating up through the water column floating past it's great because it takes them like two or three hours just to get down to the seafloor um strip t says team inept i don't know why uh raging model is going for a big win and you brew don't get them confused i knew borderlands when madonna sang about it oh no wait that's borderline octopi says edward well technically technically it's a greek word so octopuses would be correct to, no actually well 
technically the absolute correct if you go from the original greek word the octopodes or octopodes would actually be the correct plural but it sounds stupid i love it octopodes because it's not a latin word octopus so it shouldn't actually be octopi it should be octopuses but most people call it octopi nobody really cares but just in case you ever wondered theoretically octopodes is the correct uh pronunciation the correct plural I used to have a hawkfish, says Edward. Cool. I saw that one too. It was awesome, says Liam. Awesome. It was a Dumbo, Dumbo octopus. I saw that one too. Dumbo octopus is cool. Oh, I've got one fell over. Sorry, dude. Uh, the Nautilus is awesome, but I lose half of the crew audio a lot sometimes. Yeah, sometimes the crew audio is a bit quiet or a bit broken. Edward says moist sponges. Yeah. I can't get close to the microphone to do that, I'm afraid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but Lynn, Borderlands, original Borderlands now would be like a dollar. You can, don't buy it online, but you go to your local game store, they'll have a used copy of it for like a dollar. So, just, you know, it came out on Xbox 360 and PS3, so that's how old it is. Uh, it's a good, good game you can play with up to four people, but you can play it solo if you want to. It's a very good game. Borderlands. Do, 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 do. I thoroughly enjoyed Borderlands. Totally silly humour. I'm enjoying Borderlands 3, but I still think Borderlands the original is the best one of the bunch. Borderlands 2 was okay. But got a bit more convoluted and... I don't know. Borderlands 3 is even more convoluted and complex. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now these little weapons, these bolters, will be inside the sponsons and will be hidden away. So to a certain degree, I do have a lot more freedom in that I don't need to make sure every single surface is completely clean and tidy. Because a lot of it, I probably will end up gluing the sponsons into a position because I don't want them spinning around for the same reason. I don't want the demolisher kind of moving because it will just take the paint off. So we'll probably end up with these being fixed. So I don't need to worry too much, for example, about cleaning the back part, because you're probably not going to see that, I don't think. And it's in place. You might see a bit of it, maybe. Mm, maybe not. Mm. Do, 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 do. Yeah, because you see the back there, you see on the bolter here, the back of the bolt is inside the sponsor, so... I'm not going to not, I'm not going to like just completely skive off doing that part, but I don't need to worry too much about it not being showroom perfect, if you know what I mean. I can just make it look good. You're never going to see that mould line down the back, so if there's a little bit of it there, it's not the end of the world. As long as everything's nice and clean. Round and earthy. Let's get rid of all the mold lines on the bits you can see. We are golden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get rid of that. Fan on my PC just kicked in. Not quite sure why. I'll just check something actually. One second, folks. Wobbly camera while I check something. Do, 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 do. Pause. There we go. I actually forgot to um, pause Windows updates. Thankfully, I wasn't in the middle of downloading any, or I might have been. It's not caused a problem. Remember the days when my stream used to fall over at half three every day? every time it's because uh, the windows update was doing its thing now this is i don't know how you know saying this bane blade this is the test build see how much i can tolerate this build to do lots of these and paint them and sell them well i've enjoyed the build up to now but this bit could be tedious 
Although if I'm doing them, building them to sell, I'll only do two of the sponsors, not four. But cleaning up all these bolters, yeah, not not the most fun. Little bit tedious. At least I have to drill the barrels out. That's one thing. Barrels are just pre pre tubed. Uh, Mace, Mace, model making gurus, cutting corners, Mace. I'm not cutting corners. I'm simply saving time. My PS4 has been played, packed away. I never played it. I did try and charter, but I kept dying every time I started the game. Ah. There are many more games than just the one. There it is. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm not cutting corners. I'm just, I'm being practical. Like I said, this is the test build to assess, you know, if I come to make some to sell, which bits can I focus on? Which bits do I not need to focus on? Like if I'm building one to sell it, I'll try and do the best I can with the paint job. But there'll be places where at the same time, I need to speed up the build process. If I need to build five of these to sell them, I don't want to be doing a showroom quality build process on every single one because I'll die of boredom. But if there are places where I don't need to worry about getting everything perfect because it just cannot be seen, or because I can do it in such a way that you can't see it, then I know I can speed the process up. It's like I'm, I'm looking for the because this is my own little personal build. So it's my test build. I'm looking for the ways that I can automate the process. I can factory factory line, uh, assembly line the process. If I, you know, in the future, I might buy four of these and build them all at the same time and get them all painted up. And if I'm doing the slow build process every time, I just I, I wouldn't survive that. Now it is a Lord of War and it is a big expensive thing if I was selling it, so I would make sure it had a really good paint job. But the places you can shave savings, time savings, the same way Henry Ford automated car production, basically. Up until that point, it was carriage makers that made cars and they took forever. I don't want to do that. La, 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 la. It's that sort of lack of attention that leads to chaos. It's heresy, says B3. Yes. Oh, sniffle, sniffle. Look to my games. Next one. Get this cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm is saying about getting a cheap gaming PC. And the one word of caution I would say about that is if you don't game that often. If you're not a big gamer and you just might occasionally play some games or you might just want to play some sort of simpler games that aren't demanding of good hand-eye coordination um, then un unless you plan on using that gaming PC for everything else or your other PC needs if your only use for that gaming PC is going to be a gaming PC I wouldn't bother I'd go for a console because if you're only going to use it occasionally and you don't intend on using that PC for all your other basic uh, you know, computer activities like internet and finding your accounts and all the other stuff, whatever you're going to use a computer for, then you're going to spend all that money in a gaming PC, not use it very often, and within a year or two, it's going to be obsolete because most of the games coming out will struggle to work on it. Whereas if you get yourself a console, then at least you know you've got a good six, seven, eight years of use out of that console before people stop making games for it. And even then, you probably get more than that. Yeah. 
because the requirements for PC gaming go up every year and eventually the, the kit you've got will be not powerful enough. Whereas with, if it's an occasional thing you're going to do. Whereas probably for the same, well, the gaming PC you would get for the cost of a current console wouldn't be very good. And wouldn't last you very long before nothing would work on it. At least with the gaming, with a game console, if you're not a big gamer and you're just going to do it occasionally, you just literally have to get the game, put it in and play it. And you can guarantee the game's going to work every time. Oops. If you've got a PS4, there's a batrillion games for the PS4. They're still making games, you know, it's still a valid console. So I wouldn't... If you're not a big gamer, there's very little point you're buying a gaming PC when you can there's like a million games for the PlayStation 4. You've got a perfectly valid console there that's probably still got another couple of years left in it before they stop making games for it. And it's been out since 2013, 2014. So there's six or seven years worth of games there you can play on it. I mean, I'm an Xbox man myself, but you've still got a PS4, which is a perfectly valid console. Uh, and for the little you do play games, I wouldn't say a gaming PC was worth it, unless you're going to use that PC for everything else. Like, I do everything on PC. I, I do all my editing, filming, my social media. My, my, my world is on my PC, which is why I don't game on it. Because I can't sit on my computer all day working and then do gaming on it as well. But, if you're just getting it for, the, for a game... Unless it's some real modern game that you absolutely can't get on PlayStation 4. Stick with your PlayStation 4. There's so many games for that now that will be dirt cheap because they're five or six years old. Little little point spending on a, a gaming rig. If you're going to use it occasionally. Because you do everything on Mac, aren't you? You're a Mac user, aren't you, Lindsay? You've got your Mac already for all your other stuff. All your non-gaming stuff. I wouldn't bother. You spend five hundred dollars on a gaming PC, it can be a bit garbage. You can spend that same amount of money on a, a modern console, and it'll last you ten years before they stop making games for it, and the games will just work. Y you know what I mean? Oops, that's a bit rubbish. It's kind of one of those things. It's not really worth the investment if it's an occasional thing. Because after a year or two, you're going to have to buy a better hard drive or a better graphics card or a better this or a better that. And you may as well just stick with the console. At least the game's going to work. If you're a hardcore gamer and you can use it for everything else, then you can go for a gaming PC. But honestly, budget ones? Nah. If you've got a budget now for like two or three hundred dollars, you can't buy a gaming PC for that anyway. You may as well get yourself a console. It'll be better than any console, any PC you can buy for the same amount of money. Big nub. Not that I'm an expert, of course. Uh, la, 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 la. Base time says, I didn't bother with those mold lines on the back of the bolters at all. Just like, just straight left them. Yeah. Uh, 9,001 ostriches says I bought Alien Isolation for the PS4 when it came out still never played it too scared yep I'm a Mac user says Lim um, so I wouldn't bother with a gaming PC because you're spending three or four hundred dollars on something that will be obsolete within a year uh, and isn't going to be as good as the, the the latest consoles anyway and they've got seven or eight or nine ten years left in them before they before they come obsolete I'd stick with your PS4 for the amount of gaming you do I'd stick with your PS4 Set it up, plug it in, go to the local game store and just buy a load of dirt cheap second hand games. Done. There you go. Because if you buy if you got if you buy games used, like I say, Borderlands, which was you know $59.99 when it came out in 2009, uh, is now like I, I went I got a copy of Borderlands, for example. You might not like Borderlands, it's a bit of an intense shooter, but as an example, I had to rebuy Borderlands about six months ago. It was it was forty nine ninety nine when I bought it in two thousand eight. It cost me two pounds from the bargain used bin in my local game shop. Like somebody bought it and just you know people trade in their games. There's there's eight or nine there's seven or eight years of games library for that PS4 that you could be playing 
with no hassle and no problems. I wouldn't waste your money on a gaming PC. I don't think you're the kind of person that will benefit from it in terms of your gaming habits. Like Mama Fox downstairs, she's got an Xbox One. All she ever plays is Bejeweled. She, all that happens is she just inherits my old console. When I get a new console, she gets my old one because otherwise I just have to sell it or throw it out. So I give her my old console. So she's had my Xbox 360. She's had an, an Xbox One now. She's on. And when I get an Xbox Series X, she'll get my Xbox One X. And she'll still just play Bejeweled. So if she spent three hundred, you know, five hundred dollars on a gaming PC just to play Bejeweled, which is a match three puzzle game, that would have been five hundred dollars wasted. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend a gaming PC for you. I think you'd be, uh, you'd be wasting your money. Your PS4 has got. Nine years of games on it. Good enough game library. And when you do eventually want to start work up from that, then you've got the current PS5 or you know Xbox Series X to go from from there. So you'll be behind the current curve, but it doesn't matter. I'm using an I'm using an iPhone 6. I'm like three years behind the curve, but it works for me. So there you go. You've got the console. You don't need to spend all that money. <laughs> you can put that money on something much more much more useful or beneficial or just save it for other things you don't need you don't need a gaming rig <laughs> plus a lot of the computers you buy off the shelf like your pre-set up and stuff they're kind of garbage anyway a lot of them aren't very good so you'd probably still be overpaying for something that wasn't very good. <sighs> I'd stick with your PS4, mate. You've got a billion games on that in the in that that you can play on that console. That will keep you more than happy for a long, long time, I think. Until you decide to upgrade from that. But I think you'll be sorted. I bought two Meng Toon tanks for nine dollars ninety nine US dollars each at Hobby Lobby. There, twenty five ninety nine on Amazon. Is they would? Yeah, they could have been clearing stock or having a sale. Uh, keep in mind, bricks and mortar stores will probably be having lots of sales right now because they they have they have less people coming into the stores because of obviously the entire world being on fire. So. You find a lot of stores have sale are more open to have stock clearances and sales now because they just need to get stuff sold. Their profits will be like down through the floor at the moment for some of them. The stuff that isn't moving fast, they'll clear it for stuff that is. They'll probably want to get rid of that off the shelf so they can sell something that sells much more easily. Let's have a look. Some second hand games on Amazon are still in there. Cellophane wrappers, absolutely. But the cheapest way you can get games is to go into your local game store, either GameStop or whatever it might be. If you're in the UK, it might be Game or Granger's Games, your bricks and mortar game shop. And they'll have a big section where it's all the people that trade in games, that the used games. They're like a dollar. Anything that's more than two or three years old, it can be like a dollar. Like if you get the original Borderlands on online on the Xbox Live service or on PlayStation Network, it's like fourteen dollars. I'm talking Ameri American here. It'll be fourteen dollars, ten to fourteen, fifteen dollars for a ten year old game. Go into your local game store. It'll be like one or two dollars, a used copy. You'll be fine. But again, I, I'm having what you've said, Lynn, about you know coordination stuff. Probably Borderlands might not be for you because it's a it's a fast paced uh, shooter. But don't forget one thing to keep in mind. You say you tried playing Uncharted and you couldn't, you didn't do, you couldn't even remember where the buttons were. That's because you've been trying to use a controller for like all of what an hour. When I first started gaming, 
back on a PlayStation 2. I had no experience of controllers. I didn't know all the the norms. And I was like, this is horrible. I don't like I can't I can't use this. It's horrible. I don't understand the sticks. What? Within six months it was second nature and now I can instinctively just use a controller in any game without thinking about it. If you've never if you don't have the habit of gaming with a gaming controller, it won't be natural to you at first. You'll get used to it. But maybe ease yourself in with some simpler games before you start going into the proper hardcore games. There's tons of games out there. Start yourself off with the you know the, the less complex, less twitch shooter type games and uh, now one chart is not a twitch shooter. And ease yourself in. But you'll get there. It's just, it's just you're just learning a new skill. Like I can't. I've I've been typing for thirty years and I can't touch type. But I'm getting better at it. I can kind of type without looking at the keyboard a bit more now. Well, that's a lot more complex. Whereas my mum could just go without looking at the keyboard she could touch type hundreds of words a minute and i'd be like wow just like that if it's something you don't do every day you won't know you won't be that instinctively able to do it once you do it enough you'll be fine my friend nikki uh artist who does lots of uh, dot paintings and stuff when i got my first xbox back in 2001 um all she ever played was Final Fantasy on the original on the original PlayStation. It was a big Final Fantasy nut, which you know is the original PlayStation is left and forth, left and back scrolling. It was dead simple stuff. She'd never played a first person shooter in her life ever. Didn't even know the concept of a first person shooter. She played Final Fantasy and she played Abe's Odd World platformers and stuff. Um, I got my Xbox, my original Xbox. I introduced her to Halo, fast first-person shooter, which was the, one of the first few, few, one of the first games to use the sort of the twin-stick first-person controls, kind of set the gold standard. She had no experience with that at all, and at first, she couldn't. All she did was run around looking at the floor. She didn't know how to move, how to jump, how to aim. She didn't understand the buttons. She wasn't used to it at all. She had no concept, and she was like, "I don't. I'm getting motion sick now. I don't like this." Like the first few times she was like, I can't, this is rubbish, I can't play this. She wasn't used to first person perspective. She wasn't used to the controls. She didn't know what she was doing. Within six months, she was whooping our ass. She was an absolute demon with the sniper rifle in six months. She was running around, planting sticky grenades on us, plasma grenades. She was sniping us from across the map. She, oh man. She became the best of all of us at playing Halo. But just a few months before, she couldn't even walk. She couldn't even move around. She didn't know how to look up or look left. She had no concept of what the sticks did. But it didn't take long for her to get the muscle memory and to figure out, you know. And that, you know, after a little while, she knew exactly where the buttons were. That, you know, when I look at a controller now, if I'm holding it and the screen prompt says press B, I know B's there. X is there. Y is there. A is there. You just it becomes instinct and muscle memory it takes a bit of practice but you get there and, you know, just don't be afraid of it maybe uncharted wasn't the best game to start with because it requires a certain knowledge of quick time prompts and a certain experience of game playing start with something more simple start your way up work your way in slowly and just you know maybe that kind of third person action adventure isn't your kind of game maybe you're more platformers 2d platformers or you know, maybe you're more puzzle games or, I don't know, point and click type stuff. There's, there's lots of different types of game out there. You never know. You'll find something. There's plenty of cheap second-hand games out there in your local game store, though. You've got the console, so you may as well. Spend a lot less money buying some second-hand games and seeing what tickles your fancy. And if you don't like them, take them, trade them in for something else. There you go, you see. Quite a long thing about that, haven't we? 
Uh, Team Inep says, I'd love an Elite controller, but I can't justify it. I'd, I got an Elite controller and I love it. Although I think, I'm not sure. I think I'm starting to get some stick drift with it. I don't know though. When I'm playing Borderlands, sometimes my character moves ever so slightly, but I've not noticed anywhere else. Yeah. Um, life is a lot better with uh, with the Elite controller, I have to tell you. It's much, much better. But yeah, it's not cheap. I hope it lasts me a long time and it's not a stick drift because I can't afford I don't really want to buy, to buy another one. But I don't know if I can go back to a regular controller now with no buttons underneath. So much better. Uh, I've so got used to the Elite controller, I have trouble when not using one, says Chris. Yeah, it's the. I, I tend to find this, you've got the four paddles under the Elite controller. I don't use this one ever. I've deactivated it because I tend to find that when I'm playing, this one gets. I don't know why just that one, but that one, I'm always knocking it. So if that's like throw a grenade or whatever, I'm always, so I've just deactivated that one. So I've just got these three for uh, Y, A, that's jump, I think. I know it instinct, I can't remember which one it is, but I know it's instinctive. I think that's Y, that's A for jump, and that's B. I don't use that one very often though. It's mostly Y and A that I use. So much better. If you don't know what an Elite controller is, it's a, an Xbox controller, but it's got like, it's, a, it's 150 quid. And it's got like proper weighted metal sticks and buttons and everything. You can swap all the buttons out and sticks with magnets and things. And there's paddles underneath. And there's different settings for trigger tension. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous piece of engineering. I'm a one finger jabber when it comes to typing, says Phil. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Uh, okay, controller people, invert Y. And Paul says, of course you invert Y, F, F, S. Anyone who disagrees, I'm going to ban. I invert Y. Invert Y is correct. If I see someone texting, texting rapidly with two thumbs, I start to cry. It's not natural. That's because they've come from the old keyboard days. I, 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 had, to, I had to stop myself doing that on iPhones. I'm like, ah. I remember, I never forget where many years ago, uh, when we all used to have like a, a Nokia. And with the, the th and you do like the thumb pad. I got one of the ones where it opened out and it had the keyboard split across. It was a Nokia still, I can't remember which one it was now, but it had the keyboard, like a QWERTY keyboard. You could do the th you could do the buttons on the front, but you could open it up and there'd be a full keyboard there. And I could type like this. And I did a test with my girlfriend at the time. I said, right, you will we'll send a text, we'll send a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Because she could type text faster than me. I said, we'll see who wins. And we started. So three, two, one, go. And by the time I'd done it and sent it, she'd almost finished typing hers. And I'm like, chuck, 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 chuck. it was amazing. It was pre-internet phones. It was pre-smartphones. I think after that, I had an N95, which was one of Nokia's first sort of internet-y kind of phones. And then I got an iPhone. This was back in 2005 and six. I can't remember what brand Nokia it was, but I loved it. Opened up like that. And you have the keyboard there. It was fantastic. I think it had real, real simple internet on it, but like, like super simple. Nothing. It was still basically an LED screen, LCD screen. <laughs> yeah, that PS4 and you've got there, it's a valid gaming console. They'll still support games on it for the next couple of years, so you've got eight or nine game, years of games on there. Plus, it's you can, I don't know, you'll be fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw your money away on a gaming PC. I don't think you get the benefit from it. I think you're the kind of person who will benefit from more from a console because it'll last you seven to ten years without having to upgrade it or change the innards. Whereas if you game on PC, a couple of years in, you're going to have to upgrade the graphics card or the, you know, the processor or something because games will require more and more. At least on consoles, they'll always design it with the console in mind. So. A game that's a game released now for PlayStation 4 will work perfectly on a PlayStation 4 built in 2014. A game released now to run on a modern computer will probably struggle to run on a nine-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old computer without lots of compromises. So that's the difference. 
Uh, also, invert. Anyway, yes, invert your Y always. Is this for shooting or flying? Doesn't matter. Invert your Y. Okay, I'll look into easier games, says Lynn. Yeah, don't 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 try one game and 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 give up on gaming just because it it, it didn't do very well. A, it's it's not the easiest of games, and B, you know, you're not familiar with the. If you're not familiar with the the traditions of gaming, like you know, certain certain things are instinctive to gamers. Like we all know, um, you know, Xbox gamers, at least we all know X does something, Y is jump, A is, you know, we, we kind of know a lot of times that there's certain, what's the word I'm looking for? Traditions, gaming traditions that we all take for granted. Like in most games, this left stick is move around and this stick is look. Even in third person game or in vehicle games, traditionally, that's going to be move and that's going to be look, traditionally. So we're all kind of instinctively tuned to that. You picked up a controller and went for not the easiest of games with none of that experience. So don't 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 be worried that you you're off gaming now because that's like picking up an airbrush with no training and not knowing what to do and going I can't airbrush. You you you, know, you can you just haven't done it before. It'd be fine. Just have a look through the bargain bucket at your local game store. See what tickles you fancy. Spend, you know, pick out some games that are like one or two bucks each. Done. If they don't, if they're not very good, you don't like them, take them back or just keep them to one side. Go and get some more. There's literally thousands of games out there you could play on that. Oh, we're still doing bolters. Coming up to ten to five, and I'm not finished cleaning up my bolters yet. I told you this might not be a very exciting stream today. Uh, where are we up to? Mm -mm -mm. I worked in a returns warehouse for phones when Nokia's first came out. Sounds like a Nokia 7200. It might have been. It had like a hinge. It was like <laughs> keyboard on either side. I still have to hunt and peck on the phone and laptop keyboard. I've lost the ability to type on my iPhone. I keep hitting all the wrong buttons. Uh, apart from Cyberpunk 2077, that hardly works on anything. Absolutely. Gaming PC is a bit of a misleading concept anyway. For real heavyweight stuff, you're looking at well over a thousand pounds. Cheap gaming PC just can't do anything much. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, illustrated perfectly by the latest consoles. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Let's just round them up and say they're 500 quid. 500 quid for the latest consoles. If you were to build a, a gaming PC that could do what those two consoles do, you'd be paying well over a thousand pounds. Because Microsoft and Sony are able to do it uh, in certain ways with, you know, with custom made equipment. Um, whereas, you know, if you're building your own gaming PC, to just get a graphics card, to you know, to, to get a, a graphics card that can do at the very least what the Series X and the PlayStation 5 do, you're probably going to spend more than those consoles cost. It's going to be more than $500 just for the graphics card. There are no SSD hard drives as fast as the ones in the new consoles. So that's just an example. There is, there, like Paul says, there really is nothing really as such as a cheap gaming PC. Because what you're really doing is, if you're buying a, a cheap gaming PC, you're probably buying a crap PC that will just about run some older games with all the settings on low. And struggle to run anything that requires a lot of RAM or fast hard drive access. Especially if you're buying it off the shelf. I don't recommend that at all for gaming PCs anyway. So I really, I really would save yourself the money, Lynn, and just, just stick with your PS4. If you want to upgrade later on, you know, especially like you might try some games and be like, I really don't like gaming now. It's not really f for me. It's not, it's not, it's not worth it. And if you do want to then go up a step, you know, again, console. If you're a hardcore gamer, a proper hardcore gamer, they'll drop a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on a PC for a proper gaming rig. They can get all the best graphics and everything else. And if you're not into that, 
that's not what you're after. It's just throwing money away. It's like me buying a Ferrari and all I do is drive around to the corner shop. No point. You've got a PS4 there, you'll be fine. You can always upgrade to something more powerful later on. If you decide that you're into gaming and you, if you find a type of game that you really grok and you really love it and you're really into it, or if you eventually get comfortable with controls and think, you know what, I can do this now. I can do first person shooters. I can do, you know, third person adventure games. And so it. Then you can look at upgrading to a better console or even a gaming PC then. But at least you haven't spent a thousand dollars on something that you didn't like. Like Paul says, you're not going to get a decent gaming PC for five hundred dollars. Uh, Space hamster. I've been detailed and painting for two hours and I'm going cross eyed. I'm going to go figure out what to shove into my face for dinner. Have a good one, everyone. Yes. Take care, my friend. See you soon. Thanks for coming in. There is no such thing as a cheap gaming PC, says Ostriches. Uh, what I can mentally spend for gaming, at, like I cannot spend more than $40 on most models. Uh, I just noticed, finished all the mince pies. No, no. <laughs> Legos, now that's another story. I can sometimes justify more for them. Yes, except there's no such thing as Legos. It's Lego. The plural of Lego is Lego. And it's all capitalised, apparently. Apparently, if you walk up to someone who works at Lego and say Legos, they basically take you around the back and shoot you. Apparently. Apparently, I'm told. I read an interview once and it was a guy, it was one of the, it was the guy that, the son of the guy that founded Lego. And he said, what, what's, the, what's the thing that gets on your nerves the most? And they're asking, like, you know, with these, like, you know, is it counterfeiters? Is it copyright trademarks? He says, he says, no, it's people that say Legos. As it drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm like, bless. Yeah, Chinese ripoffs is bad and, and counterfeiting is terrible, but people that put Legos, no, oh, that's the worst, man. He said, bless. Uh, I use my PC, uh, here we go, team inept. I use my PC a huge amount, not just gaming, and my previous machine was knackered, so it was a justifiable expense, but I really understand your position. It's why I don't have the new Xbox as team inept. Yeah. And that's what I was saying to Lynn. If you if you intend on no longer using your Mac for everything else, and you're going to use that gaming PC for everything, then maybe you could justify spending a thousand dollars or more on a gaming rig. But you'll probably have. Get even then, you'd have a PC that's vastly overpowered for most of the stuff you're going to use it for. But at least it's more justifiable than just for games. I know it sounds like I'm nagging you, and I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure you don't go and spend a load of money on something that you may not end up using. You might do. But I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. I know money's tight. And I wouldn't want you wasting money on anything then that I didn't think you'd get full use of. Especially that you're not sure about. When that money's much more, you know, valuable spent elsewhere. Oops. Wrong one. Right, we can actually glue some shuzzle together now. I nearly said a rude word then. I nearly forgot to look at the post-it there. Ah, la, 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 la. I spent a bunch of money on a game, gaming PC a few months ago. I need to find out that it's much more entertaining just watching Team Inept play games on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> ECI Do says, we'll get an Xbox at some time, but I have no rush at the moment. We'll get Cyberpunk sometime too, but not yet. Yeah, that's the other thing. I, I, I obviously enjoy my gaming. But even I, and I have FOMO like nobody's business. I'm like George, I get terrible FOMO, fear of missing out. But even I can sit here and say I've not bought a Series X, because I can't. You can't get them. Um, but I'm not worried about it because I know I'm just playing Skyrim and Borderlands and Fallout. I don't need right now the top end new console. So I can quite happily not spend that money just yet. Well, eventually. <sighs> La 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 la. Uh, I thought the plural of Lego was Legi. Band. Uh, hi, Jeff, says Lynn. Hello, my friend. How you doing, buddy? La 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 la. Uh, enjoy the Bambi Graham, says Dan. What? Oh, venison. Yes. Ooh, yeah. I miss classic space Lego, says E.C. Ido, who totally ignored my conversation about Legos. <laughs> Why, I order. Um, nom, nom. 
yes, I know it's time to trim my moustache now because I'm having to absorb a litre and a half of coffee out of my moustache. Uh, 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 it's only just popped up on there. We won't pop up on there yet, but the 9,001 ostriches, ostriches has just become a channel member. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, he's now become a, 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 a channel member. Remember, folks, if you want to become a channel member, uh, like Ostrich, who's a cool kid, if you want to be one of the cool kids, it's a way that you can help support this channel and keep it alive by basically paying my wages. Um, but you'll get access to ad-free content in advance, a week in advance as well. Uh, you can support the channel and you get most, not all, but most of my content will come out ad-free a week in advance. And you'll get access to that. Or you can become a patron and go to patreon.com slash model making gear. It's another way to do it if you want to. But massive thank you. Thank you for that, my friend. I really appreciate that. Especially right now while money's tight. Thank you. Uh, you'll also get some free stickers, but I've not, you know, free emojis, but I've only done a few so far. Mm, same for me, Fox, says Phil East. I'll get one when a few games are interesting to me. So far, it's just Cyberpunk that tempts me. Yeah, I'll, I mean, Cyberpunk tempts me apart from when it's not broken. I will get an X, a Series X eventually, but you know, playing old games right now, and I've already got Skyrim and Fallout 4 in 4K, I, and Elite Dangerous in 4K. Eh, no, I don't need to rush about it. Welcome new member, says Chris at Gross Models. Yes. Uh, can I ban him as his induction, says Team Inept? No. No. Uh, Team Inept says we'd have to do a lot more content before we could justify a patron, says Team Inept Candy Graham. Oh, oh um, it pro I'd probably be in as a Team Inept patron. Yeah, we don't do enough content on there to, to really do a Team Inept Patreon account just yet. We're not even monetized on that channel yet. I will be moving all my gaming stuff to Team Inept eventually when we can monetize it. Enough that it makes it a viable option for me. Right now, if I put my gaming content on Team Inept, I'd lose a big chunk of my income. So, yeah, not ideal. Right, let's do some shizzle together. And we on? we're on five o'clock. I need to go for a wee. Let me go for a wee first. Let's see if buttons are still working. Are my buttons working, Ted? Slap it on. Oh, there was a delay there. I thought they weren't working for a minute. Right, let me go for a great big wee. Now turn off the microphone, uh, obviously, and I will. Uh, I will go on and do a great bit, and then we'll come back and we'll get one of these glued together. And then we'll done. So back in a minute. I'm back. Ooh, put my rings back on. Hello, welcome back, everybody. I forgot to turn off my desktop audio there, so you got that music doubled up. I do apologise. I forgot to press one of the buttons. There you go. I'm back. Anyway, where were we? Right. Let's do some stuff together. I think I might just light the bottom row of the Viper Pilot helmets. Drilling into the top row to install lights is going to be a nightmare. It's like that big, dude. Oh, wait, hang on. Is this... Viper from the re rehash 
Battlestar Galactica, or is this original series 1980s Viper? When you were asking about, is it a Ravel thing? In that case, I don't know about the Ravel kit of that. I haven't built that. I think we're talking about the BSG Vipers. Uh, he's waiting for Chris to do all the work to get it monetized and he's parachuting in to claim the credit, says me. No, says Paul even. No, no, it's just right now. If I do a game stream, it's two or three hundred views that I suddenly won't have on this channel. That will earn me nothing. So, yeah, I can't, I can't afford to do that. Uh, original, says Dan. All oh, right, there we go. When we were talking about it earlier on, I was talking about the. Uh... No, that was that was the different conversation, wasn't it? I'll shut up now. Shut up now. Right, where are we? We need to glue some chisel together. So we we'll get ourselves a couple of bolters. That's one bolter. Now we need to make sure that the shell ejection ports are opposite. Yes. Uh, okay, we do have one side and the other. We need to make sure that's that one. We'll keep them separate. I think. How is this? How is this going to work? Okay, so one side has a thing with a tab, and the other side has a hole. Do do do. That's a hole. That's a hole. Hole. Tab. 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 So go together like that. You see. All together like that, lovely. Yeah, so you can't actually. Uh, when I did, uh, what was it? I did it on. I put guns on something, uh, and I had. Oh, it's on my Lehman Russ here. I replaced the flamers that were built into it with some spare bolters that I had. But like a dingus, I put the shell ejector thing there. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. I glued the wrong one on the wrong side. So yeah, the guns are the wrong way around. Yeah. Somebody did point that out to me. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't notice that. Fudge. Right, so this needs to go like that. With the piston on the bottom. A little bit of bottom piston going on. That goes through thole. With the creakety. And then this goes on there like that. And... That will be the assemblage of those onto that little piece of frame. So the idea is that that rotates freely like that. And then this will rotate within the sponson like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to not necessarily glue them in right now. Because I want to get them in situ in the sponson and then get them at the right angle. at a nice pleasing angle. And then I can build the sponsor out and then glue it all into a fixed position then. Because painting them isn't going to be too hard in the sponsor. And there's only a few little bits I need to... Oh, a big mould line there. Hang on. Oh, chunder. Mould line for a start. Although this is just for my own personal build, so... In the world, if there's a mould line here or there. Not quite terminal. Terminated. See, if I try and glue, glue these two weapons together without gluing them to the bit in the middle, I'll just end up gluing it all into one thing. So I may as well wait till I can get it into the sponson. And then I can get them locked into position then. Sponson, says Reggie Modler. Ostrich here says waffles. Uh, Ostrich, if you want to do the custom emoji, only a few, but if you do colon and then start typing fox, it'll give you the options for the little smiley faces. There's only a few more. I need to go through my other um, things and create some more. This is something I keep needing to do and keep not doing. But I must. I must. I must improve my body. Uh, this is the other way around now. So that needs to go. Okay. That's on that side. Ah. 
One assumes it's still like this though. These are chiral. There's a left side and a right side because this one has the little sticky out bit on the other side. Massive great, you know, massive great mold line on there again. Come on, Fox. Play the game now. Now they will get a black casing, so they'll probably hide that mold line anyway. So this is a good way for me to try and figure this out. I'm going to assume I can glue these ones they're in situ in the in the sponsors. So that's my assumption. This is why I'm learning. That might be the wrong decision, but I'll know that when it goes wrong, if it goes wrong. And I'll know that for when I do the right decision. Uh, the proper build that I end up selling. It's all about me learning the best way to get these things painted and built. As efficiently and quickly as possible. For the future. For the future! With Vault Tech 2. Uh, another one. I don't know what the plan is for dinner tonight it, on my bench obviously is there's my belly I don't know yet because uh, I said as I came up to start the stream I says to Mama Fox right while I'm streaming you just go in the freezer and pick something out to defrost and I'll make it with chips so it could be anything it could be sausage it could be chicken it could be fish fingers if she's being lazy and didn't want to bother getting something out to defrost, she'll have just seen some fish fingers and gone, we'll have fish fingers, because there's no defrosting required there. If she's being a bit lazy. Wish well, may have got out some meat products and put them on to defrost. I do not know. I shall find out when I go downstairs. Right, there we go, some Boltariums. Do the last two. Mini, mini, dee. What's chat doing? Uh, the Facebook is proper capping out today, says Raging Modeler. That's because it's Facebook. I've no, you know what makes me laugh? This new design of Facebook. Um, half of it doesn't actually work on desktop. It's just absolute garbage. Like they've got the new Messenger Center where if you've got pages and stuff, uh, you can go and look at pages and things. You, you can manage your pages and look at all your general uh, overall center for messages and contacts and stuff. And half of it just doesn't work on desktop. It's like, really? You're a multi-billion pound company, dollar company, and you can't even get your own nonsense to work on the internet. Some of us use it on desktop, you know, not mobile. Although having said that, the mobile versions of the Facebook app are so bad. Wait, is it on? Sorry, no, apologies. On mobile. It doesn't off some of it doesn't work like the desktop app for iPad no, the, using the app on iPad doesn't work using the desktop version on iPad is terrible like you know I don't use Facebook on my mobiles at all apart from apart from the messenger center because that's fairly stable I can quickly while I'm playing a game and I've got my computer doing something I can quickly check messages on Facebook but for actual Facebook no I don't no desktop or I don't use it right that's the four gun units built so these now need to attach to the little points there in the front of these panels here uh, and they go like that the idea is this sticks out the sponsor and goes up and down theoretically I can glue that in place now and just it does make painting a little later challenging though because once I build the sponsor around this I can't get in there to paint that part now I know you can't really see it but it's going to be there although once they are actually glued in place and sealed away inside the sponson sponson hmm. I think what may have to happen here again this is just for my own build I would paint these as like a, a silver, so like lead belcher. Lead belcher. I'll get them out again now. I'll paint them as lead belcher and then have a black casing. Uh, and then little details in gold. If these are built into, into situ, in, in situ, into place, 
like that then yes i can't get in there to paint the interiors but a they're going to be in darkness but b i can give them a general coat of lead belt chip and then paint these bits black quite easily i can do that so it's not a big thing that you can't see all the interior stuff because it's going to be dark anyway i think we can get away with that but again it's all part of the learning experience I need to get rid of that nub there's a learning experience up there I shall, I shall glue these, I think, to a rough, I think I can quite handily just glue these into position now and glue them into place on the little piece as well. So I think we'll get that done. We'll do one. We'll just, we'll just bite the bullet. Again, this is like a trial run, so it doesn't matter if it goes wrong. It's only my deathcore dudes. I hope this is the right way up. Yes, it seems to be. Thank the maker. Glue that on there. That should start to hold that in place. And I can also glue the actual bolters into place on the armature. They're permanent now. It just means my sponsor and weapons will be sticking up a little bit, which looks a bit more interesting than sticking down, which is dumb. Except that is upside down. Oh, hang on. That could have gone wrong. I can quickly fix that. Because that needs to be apparently that way up. Aha! Very quick fix. Whew. That was close. Uh, yes. The little notch at the side needs to be at the top. Whew! That was lucky. I spotted that instantly and not like half an hour later when it was far too late. That would have ended badly, that would. There'd been some claying in the showers. Right, so that is that way up. That we're lucky that way. So that's with the piston at the bottom there. I do I do like the fact they've put that piston there purely because it signifies the top and the bottom a bit better. And I don't know if that's the entire reason they did that, but it would make sense if that was the only reason that was there. So that's them in place. Make sure they're lined up. Yep. Cool. I'm probably horribly overthinking these because you won't actually see much of it anyway once it's in, in place. A little bit wobbly there. A bit of a reinforcement. I shall leave that to one side. And so the next one. Bits at the top. Slide it in, yeah. That goes on there. Glue that in. Now, in reality, of course, it may well be that it's if you want to, if I want to do a full proper paint job on these bolters. I would basically paint this sub-assembly first and then attach it to this cowling. But that seems a lot of unnecessary extra work for something that nobody's ever going to see. Even if I'm doing it as a paint it to sell it. Because again, it's about time. So it was up a little bit actually. Oops. And stick. Excellent. Well done that man. Well, these aren't quite sticking up, but it doesn't really matter. You don't want all the sponsors pointing up the same in the same way or up in the same direction because that would look a bit boring. You want some slight variation in them just to make them because they're all independent. In the actual Bane Blade, if it was a real thing, each of these sponsors would have a dude operating the cannons, the weapons. A bigger Bane Blade is. So, why is that not, this is not wanting to stay in place very easily there? Not being very sticky about being sticky. Maybe I should go for the fast setting glue, even though it means certain death. <sighs> Let's try the fast setting glue, shall we? Makes a difference. Bits at the top. Yeah, I've learned that now. I know that now. Position them first so I get them in the right place. Let's do that bit first. We'll have these ones sticking up as well. Just a bit, little bit like that, you see. 
There you go. Just there shooting up in the air. Makes no difference really. Just a bit of the faceting glue here. And oh the smell of it. Sit that. With the old magical caterpillar action. That's a bit more stable. Go for the regular extra thin on the connection. This may not be the best way of doing this, but it's just it's just my learning experience. Yeah, that faceting glue is better for anchoring than to the to the plating actually. I can I'll use that on the next one. This is all the learning experience. This is what this is always what I'm like when I'm doing the first of any kind of build. I'm always a bit more not gormless, but like, you know, a bit more haphazard and not quite sure what's going on. These ones I'll have pointing. I'll have them pointing up. I'll have them pointing just straight ahead. There you go. I'm always a bit more like exploratory and tentative and a bit more like clueless when I'm doing my first ever of something. Because that's the idea. You're learning the ins and outs of that specific kit. You're learning what it needs you to do and what you're needed to do. Learning its foibles. Like I'm sure we'll have much more of this nonsense when I do the Valkyrie. Because that's got the fiddly interior bit. But for that one, I will need to go slowly because I think with the Valkyrie, it's a case of you need to paint the interior parts first. Because there you've got the gunner that stands in the interior area which you can't put in later can't actually unless you can magnetize the roof or similar you can't quite add him later on not easily wanting to stick very well so why is it pointing down a bit awry. <coughs> a bit better. God, stinky glue. Right, put that there. Let them sit for a minute. Have a quick look at the chat. Yum, swig. <laughs> Facebook on PC is almost the same as on the phone now, anyway. Yeah. I disliked Facebook, which is also a necessary evil. Absolutely. Uh, Fox, sorry if I missed it. What is painting plans for Blame Blade, says ECI to have. For this one, it's going to be part of my Death Corps of Krieg army. Because I have the Death Corps of Krieg tank commander and uh, gunner. But I've not fully decided what the colour scheme is going to be yet. Most likely, uh, it'll be a lazy German grey paint job. Like, you know, European theatre, 1941 to 3, German grey. I think. I don't know yet, though. Because it's, it's uh, Death Corps of Krieg. Now, they can be any colour. But I think if, I'm, if I've got lots of dudes that look like little Germans, I might as well use German colour schemes to fit with the ethic. Uh, what we are on? It's 20 past. Should we see if we can get one of these built? Uh, then again, next we've got to make the sponsor that it goes into. But I need these to be wedged into place and fixed. I need to give them five minutes just to cure a little bit and lock more into place. Let's put them to one side. We'll try and get at least one sponsor done. Now I need some sponsoring parts. Housing parts. House. So I need random unnumbered parts. Uh, none of which are those. Okay. I don't think, no. Oh, not only do I have to make four sponsons, I also have to make four turrets that go on top of the sponsons because you get a sponson with a turret on the top. It's a turret on a turret. Of course it is. It's, it's Games Workshop, isn't it? I mean, it's Warhammer, isn't it? It's the law. But I do need... The other stroke. Which has the sponson parts upon it. This one here, I'll say it like that, we'll see. Up there. 
spawns them parts made to make your mouth water. Not really. So we need that is the top piece. You were Mr. Top Piece. Put that there. I'm not putting it in there because I'm not a plastic lace and I don't want that to stick to that. That could be polystyrene, that tub for all I know. And that would be a sad day. This bit here. I'm going to have a big mould line right down the middle of this, aren't I, where all the rivets are. God damn it, Games Workshop. You just you have to do this to us, don't you? Uh, we have this piece here. <coughs> and I'm going to assume that these two pieces here are relative to these two piece, three pieces here, and not this two with that. I'm going to, I'm just going to take Games Workshop at their word, which is probably a bad idea. And assume they've had some moment of sensical thinking. I know it's it's a big ask, very big ask. <coughs> Excuse me. So, these should be all the parts to make just the sponson itself. Sponson. Yeah, look at that big mold line right down the middle of all these rivets. Ugh. However, I don't think I'm going to spend my time adding more rivets to this. I think these might be easy enough for me to clean up without doing that. I think Ooh. more on this one, maybe not. Yeah, so not only do you get a tank with the sponsor mounted gun, on the sponsor mounted gun you have a turret because of course you do because why would you not so what you basically have is you have a spawn you have well i'm going to have sponsor mountain sponsored mountain no that's not even the right words sponsored mountain yep yeah. sponsor mounted bolters twin heavy bolters on top of which is mounted a heavy las cannon because of course i am because 40k you wonder why i love 40k so much it's, it's nuts now somebody did post in the boom hut and i do apologize if you're watching i can't remember who it was uh, there's a new member in the boom hut posted up a picture of a couple of bane blades he'd done and one of them was an orc bane blade because the beauty of building orcs in warhammer is that they can they scavenge a lot of their technology a lot all their technology is made out of scavenged things they found on the battlefield so it can be a completely valid tactic to use models from other factions when doing orcs so uh the builder i can't remember his name i do apologize if you're watching i do say in chat if it's you they took a bane blade and they orcified it but the beauty of it was for example, the turret, uh, from what I can remember, the turret is basically a rhino. <laughs> You've got this bane blade, but instead of the very top turret, instead of, instead of this turret, they've got a rhino mounted on it with a cannon sticking out the front. That's, it's like, uh, it's awesome. And that's one of the things about orcs. I must have to do, I'll have to do an orc thing. I have to one day when i've got enough greebles and bits and spares start thinking about like orc bane blade at some point i saw that and i'm like that that's a rhino i think it's a rhino but it could be a predator i wasn't sure it was basically a big ass it's basically a turret on the tank is another armored vehicle because orcs i, I quite like that i thought that was awesome I've got to be careful here. I don't want to start sanding away too much and leave big gaps. Oh, also, I don't want to drop the pieces. Yeah. It alighted upon my leg. That might do for that. There, there. Then I've got these rivet, these mold lines to deal with. Ugh. Thanks, Games Workshop. The only problem with riveted details is you get the same thing on the Valkyrie. Rivet details, you get the mold line right down the middle of the rivets.
which is easy to fix, it's just a pain in the bum. And you risk smoothing away the rivets and they become a bit more blurry and blebby and you've got to sand through it, so yeah. Doable. It just never comes out looking quite as good as you hoped. It just slow the process down. So yeah, I knew this going in that sponsors would be the bit that suddenly put a handbrake on and slow the process down. So when it comes to doing ones to sell, you won't be getting like extra sponsors. It'll just be a bane blade. There you go. Done. Sponsors. Because I reckon, churning them out, I probably could get a Bane Blade done from box to sale, from box to ready to sell, in like a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Depends on the painting process. If I go in full in with lots of oil paint weathering and stuff, that slows the process down because I lost a rivet there. That slows the process down because you've got like paints, time for paints to dry and stuff, so... Yeah, you've got to take that in mind. So it might not be that kind of weathering. And then, of course, you've got things like, well, if I do complex powders and stuff, powders are great and nice, but at the same time, if somebody plays it on a tabletop, lots of weathering powders, it's just going to come off. So it might be that like weathering is done in a different way, not, not using lots of powders and things, but using paints instead and that kind of scenario. Oops. I think we'll get away with that. Not baby butt smooth. But I'll just get rid of any. This is like a, there's, there's the mold line, but there's a weird kind of like almost like a. If it was a resin piece, I'd say it was a slip mark where the plastic slipped and you got a slight wiggle. Very weird. Shouldn't really get that on polystyrenes. And this one. Quick look at the chat on this bit. Do, 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 do. But when I do these to sell them, it might be that I'll just do various different. The best be the same thing. I'll do one. I'll do an individual tank of each type. So I might do a bane blade and then a storm sword and a blade storm and a sword sword and a whatever you know all the different variants. I'll just do a, a variant, not an octo blade. Uh, but then I can do different color schemes. I can do different ones in different color schemes. Because that's the that's the, the downside of doing sort of Warhammer stuff or selling Warhammer stuff for someone else to buy it for their army. If they're buying it just as a display model, then it doesn't really matter what you do, they'll just like the model. If I'm if somebody's buying it because they have no painting skills but they want a bane blade and they want it to look good, then if I paint mine as, you know, I don't know, Blood Angels colour scheme, but they're just playing a bog standard Cadian Astro Meditarum, it's not really going to work for them, is it? So that's why over time I may end up doing more than a few of these. And it might be that I do it in the background, you know, I don't, I'll build them during Warhammer Sundays, but then I'll take them off and paint them in the background in my own time. Because once I've filmed how to paint a Bane Blade, I don't need to show you again, really. Unless it's a vastly different colour scheme. Well, we'll just smooth the penny roughness. The old extra things. What I'm doing here is just very carefully running the extra thin over the the rivets and the bits I've just done, just to get rid of any fluffiness, any rough scratchiness that I've put in there. Right, that's that bit. Let's see how this constructs. A little quick look at chat. He's painting it invisible. That's B3. Paul says he's doing a pink and purple camo paint job. And he says, ah, but not Hello Kitty, says ECI Idaho. Not Hello Kitty, more along the lines of, I thought I saw a puddy tat, says Panzer. No. No, it'll probably be, uh, for my army, Death Corps, it'll probably be like German grey colour scheme. That just seems to be me a good colour scheme for Death Corps. It does mean, of course, I'll be painting all my other Death Corps tanks the same colour. Maybe. I don't know, because then I've got the Macarius Vanquisher, which would look good in a German grey colour scheme. But I've also got the um, Malkador Infernus, which would look good in a light green colour scheme, a bit like I did on that Churchill tank. So I don't know yet. It might, it might all vary. 
I think I think I'll make it my head cannon that uh, the same division can have different colour vehicles because of the reasons. Excuse me, this is sniffling my nose a bit. Because I think for things like the the Malkador Infernus, it's a very World War One looking tank. It's this kind of this kind of you know size and design. It it looks good in a green, like a just not camo green, just a green, but. Uh, although it would also look good in a Matilda colour scheme, you know, the blue, khaki, and green. I don't know if that kind of colour scheme will work so well on an enormous Bane blade, though, or even the uh, you know, Macarius Vanquisher. I don't know. I was thinking of doing, I could do a Matilda colour scheme. <gasps> I do like the Matilda colour scheme, I do like a nice Matilda colour scheme. Don't know yet, I don't know yet. Uh, been offered five pounds for my Triarch Stalker, politely told the guy to get fracked. Yeah. Like we were saying before in the chat um, on Colin's stream, if you're, if you're, my golden rule of thumb, and it doesn't always work, but my real, usual starting point is, if I'm selling something I've built and painted, it's cost of the kit, RRP, if the kit is £35 from Games Workshop, that's your starting point, cost of the kit, and then what you do is you take minimum wage at whatever the time is, your minimum wage in your country at that time times that by however many hours you spent painting it and then add that to the the rrp so if your country's minimum wage so we have to get a bit creative if your country's minimum wage is 800 is eight is eight pounds and i spend 100 hours painting it then theoretically it should be 800 pounds plus the cost of the kit now if i spend 100 hours painting a bane blade i'm not going to sell a bane blade for, bane blade for 800 pounds <laughs> So you have to get a bit creative, but, you know, and I wouldn't spend 100 hours painting it, but, you know, that will be your sort of basic rule of thumb should be minimum wage times a number of hours you spent painting it, plus the basic RRP of that kit. If somebody wants to buy it built and painted. Otherwise, you're just giving them a freebie and it's like, no. If I, if I sell you a £35 kit fully painted for £100, that kit has earned me less than someone working at McDonald's. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a McDonald's pay packet for the work I'm doing. No, that's not how it works. That's why a sideshow collectibles figure that big might take only 20 hours for them to paint it, but it's not, you know, 75 quid. It's like $500. Because, yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. What are we doing? That's my basic guide anyway, it would be something along those lines at, at the very least. That's at the very least you want something like that now it's important to make sure these bits are on the same side and that corner corner i assume that goes in there like that booyah kasha check out my car and these bits go on the side so we want why is this going to fit together now very well thank you check the leg end That will be my rough finger in the air guide as a starting point because you never know when you're selling something on eBay or wherever how much should I charge for it. And there is no absolute way to be perfectly sure because you don't know. You might not think you're that good. You might not think you've got the skills to sell it at expensive levels. And you might. How much are people willing to pay is the more important question. That's what you don't know. That will sit there. Now these are kind of like roughly put together kind of yeah i need the uh i might require the glass thing of glassness for this because i can see myself having a nightmare with these let's move this out of the way oh let's throw that bit on the floor there we go yeah there's no actual attachment pegs for this so I need to make sure that all the bits that sit at the end line up. So what do we want? We want blur goes in there. So that goes in here like that. This way around. Or not as the case may be. Thanks, Obama. Little touch of glue in there. Just hold it in a little bit. Make sure that's 
I've got to work fast now because I might want to move these around a little bit once they're in place. That goes here on that side. Okay. Lovely dose of glue. And this will sit here like that. I don't know. That, I guess, in the corner. No one puts Sponson in the corner. That will sit there like that. It's all very like vague. There's no absolute set pegs and, and sockets. It's just kind of vaguely that goes there and that goes there. If I put that flat on the surface, that should sit like that. Along there. So when it comes to this piece, I'm not going to glue this in now, but that would then sit like that. And that would line up like that. Okay, that seems fairly good. As long as these plates aren't sticking out. I don't want this side plate sticking out massively from the back here. If it did, I'd just have to sand it and that would be a pain in the bum. But if it doesn't, that'd be even better. So your weapon comes along here like this. Plunkitates into that there, per clink. This goes on top. And kablam, you have yourself a sponson. I don't think, well, bolters don't go pew, they go boom. Boom, 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 boom. And then what happens here is that that sits on there like that. Eventually. That sits on the side, and you've got your sponson weapon. So let me glue that. I don't need that glass plate, I don't think, but we'll keep it here anyway. So that goes in like that. Uh, I can now glue this all together because these weapons are just going to sit. I'm going to do them a really cowardly 45 degrees. So they're all sticking 45 degrees out like that. Uh, or I could have them pointing forward. No, we'll have them, we'll have them pointing out 45 degrees just for the ease of things. So that will sit there like that. And I've just realized, of course, that the beauty of this is when I was saying about not being able to access the guns, the bolters to paint them properly. Uh, until this is glued onto the side of the tank, I can still access them here. So my thoughts of painting these sponsor weapons has just improved vastly. There we go. I think that's going to work now. That's a bit glueage. That went together very nicely. I've got a nice crisp edge there. Unlike on some of the other parts where that edge was like and big gaps and holes. I managed to keep that nice and crisp. 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 There we go. So in three out two and a half hours, I've done one. I've not even finished it yet. I've got one half of a sponson because they've got the turret to go on the top. I know. I've not even done that yet. Now, I need to keep an eye on these because I need to make sure that I get this bit right on each one because, for example, that bit there sits in that hole there. So it can sit there or it can sit there or it can sit there. <clears throat> now, oh dear. Oh no, I don't quite know why, but my tracks aren't level. Oh, they are level. They're level there, but not. This is a solid piece of glass with no curve to it. How is that? Is this not a solid piece of... I don't believe it. <laughs> you know my perfectly flat piece of glass guide mark? It's not perfectly flat. Oh, never mind. Anyway. Yeah, this can go on either side of these, but I can't put it on this side. Because if I put it on that side, it goes there like that. It sits halfway because it's that going into one of these. So on this one, I need to make sure I have the sides matching up. So that's one of these side ones. 
I think we can get another one done before home time. Now this one, so it is fairly convenient and they've actually managed to, for once in their lives, put things in the right place. So these all line up together. So this side is all this side. Although I just forgot, I've got all the mold line to get rid of. That does slow things down a bit. Never mind. Do, 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 do. While I'm doing this, uh, what is the plan for the week? Uh, just so everybody knows, uh, there's not going to be an e-model show tomorrow night. Um, for various reasons, we're not doing a sh we're not going to have time to do a, or chance to do a show tomorrow. For various reasons, commitments and other stuff, and we did a show over Christmas on the bank holiday, so it's kind of our bank holiday day off. But uh, people have got things arranged, so yeah, we're not going to be doing any model show tomorrow. However, this week I will try, I will really try my best to get some tabletop trauma center filmed, even if I can try and get that Lehman Rust done. Uh, as best I can, if I can. But hopefully this week coming up, I won't be around, you know, won't do any model show, but I will see if I can do some live shows during the week. I shall do my very, very best. All being well, I shall be back on Friday for, well, I was going to say Fallout Friday, but it's, uh, we're sticking with Elite Dangerous for the moment. Although the last time I played Elite Dangerous, my Hotas stick was being a right pain in the bum. And I couldn't, it was like, he was ignoring the dead zones and giving me lots of Joy-Con drift, I suppose, is the best way to describe it. So it may well be we don't do Elite Dangerous. We'll find out. If I suddenly start playing it and I'm getting drift, we may just have to swap to play Fallout instead. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. And we should be back with some gaming fun on Friday and Saturday, whether it's Elite Dangerous or Skyrim or something else. Of course, I'll be back on Sunday next week with... Warhammer Sunday, in which we'll be making, I suspect, more sponsors. You, you know it. You know it's going to be more because we've got little turrets to do yet. But I will do my best to get some more of the Lehman Rust done because I really want to get the. Uh, I want to get on with the the Orc Daka Was Bomb Daka Jet Daka thing for Goblin Gaming. You know, I met up with Goblin Gaming like two years ago now. Uh, well, no, not not this year, not 2020, in 2019, sort of summer 2019, I met up with the guys and we talked about doing content for them. And it's now, you know, January 2021. Because I needed to get the Cesarbi and other stuff done and now it's, it's kind of taken all year last year to get all that and the Falcon and stuff done. So I want to get that done because I want to make some content for the Goblin guys. Hey. Do -do. But then the sky is the limit or something. I don't know. Something's the limit. See if we can get this done quickly. We've got 15 minutes. 50 minutes. That's it. Richtig. Achtung mit der Skypern und Schmusen, ja. Ziehen wir eine Removal gefahrten. Mit der Skypern, Scratchen, Leine, Removal Tool. Das ist richtig. Scrapen, Scratchen, Smoothen, Leine, Tool gefahrten. Gesicht. Yeah, there does seem to be on these these parts. Yeah, I know you won't see it on camera, but it's almost like slip. Like resin slippage when you get a piece moulded. And the mould slips. It's called mould slips, right enough. Uh, and you get that little step between two halves of, an, of a piece. Like a mould line, but it's like a... Because you get the little raised bits where the mould slipped a little bit. It's not quite lined up. sanded away one of the rivets oh no it's still there it's just not as pronounced pronounced looking a little bit rough and ready but hey it's gonna be a thousand year old tank in my mind in my mind and if anything goes horribly wrong with this 
once I've primed it and I see all the imperfections, I'm like, oh. There's always the option of hanging kit and equipment and netting and backpacks and rucksacks. Hello, Mama Fox. Backsacks and rook packs. Rook, backsacks and rook packs. Oh, dear Lord, Fox. Backsacks and rook packs. Backsack and crack. All over it. I'll just rather rephrase that. So, yeah. We shall see. When it comes to making these to sell later this year, hopefully, uh, it might just be a case that I invest myself in a few packs of 135th scale equipment kits. You know, you can buy packs of like military gear kits where it's just like rucksacks and bedrolls and boxes and things like that. Yeah, I could get some of them. You know, adorn them all over them. Or even on this one. Just to give it more fun. Because these aren't 135th, but 135th's kind of close for a lot of stuff. You can get away with 135th tanks and things with Warhammer figures, as you've seen me do in the past. Where there's nothing that particularly gives away the scale. So it is a possibility. Make sure these line up. That lines up there. Yeah, just make sure it's the right corner. I shall sense check. Phrase from my old, my old uh, civil service days. I shall sense check that the bit is there. And that means it goes on this side. That's correct. Just want to be sure because I'm doing four of them. So it's easy to get confused. And it's me and I'm an idiot. So again, it's easy to get confused. So on this one. It needs to be like the old Haynes manuals, the reverse of the procedure, which is this way. Remember when Ted was doing his Bane Blade, uh, he, he, I think he, he, he didn't mess it up, but he got a bit confuzzled with the order of these things. And I think he put a top piece on the bottom somewhere. And it, because it's not numbered, not laid out like that, because the instructions are generic for these, I can see why he did that now. I can see why he did that, Ted. See how that is an entire possibility. Uh, so this needs to go that way. It has this conveniently. They've put that bit. It's obvious there. On the instructions. So they do little things that you can see. Because you might not be able to see that once the guns are in place. But you use it yourself as a thing to figure out which way around it goes and then this piece can go either way it sits in there i think i don't think it matters which way around that goes quite i think quite so much it probably does it's probably a slightly different camber to one of the other edges i think it works i think it fits if it fits i sit loosely put that on top to make sure it locks in place also helps square up those edges sweet as sweet as a nut do 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 now colin festa 67's workshop if you're still watching hope you are uh, I missed that mold line there. Flange, clean that later. Colin, if you are still watching, I meant to ask you in your chat and I forgot. Um, you said in your stream that you won't be there next week. Uh, and it'll be Dave. Is Dave going to be on his own next week for the Sunday brunch or is he going to have some deals with him? What's happening next week with your show? You tell us. Tell us with your speaking words, with your typing words. On that, it's like that. I meant to ask you in the in, during the stream in the chat, but I completely forgot. Sidetracked. Yes, Colin's not going to be around next weekend for his Sunday brunch, but as far as I know, it's still going to be going on. It's just I, I, I don't know if it was Dave on his own because he was teaching Dave the buttons, or whether Dave will have a glamorous assistant, a guest of some sort, perhaps. Poor Dave, doing it on his own. I don't know how he'd uh, <laughs> cope with that. It's not easy doing a stream by yourself. It's quite challenging. You've got to literally just talk into the air for like however long. Not something that comes naturally to everybody. Not hard, but it's not 
easy and it's not necessarily comfortable. I salute anybody that can do it. Yes. Oh, look at him gluing the bits together live. Makes me feel so proud. Well done, model making guru. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah, so uh, Carl, what you, uh, what's your plan for next weekend then? If you're not there, is it Dad going to be by himself or is he having somebody with him? Or is it is it to remain a secret for the for the excitement and the reveal? If he's having a, a friend. Dave plus one. I assume you've taught him well. He knows what he's doing. I love watching their show though. My Sunday morning, that is my Sunday lunchtime. Yep, so now, sense check, that bit there means that that sits on that side. There you go, you've now got two sponsors. Now, in the default kit, that's all the sponsors you'd have. Well, of course, we've got twice as many. If I was just doing the two, I'd probably glue them on the back because to me, it looks, it makes more sense on the back like that. If you put them on the front, I don't know why, it just offends my sensibilities and doesn't look right to me like that. You could put them in the middle. But that looks a bit, looks better. But still, it looks a bit, a bit ganky and ungainly. I think if you're going to only have two, you should put them in the back because that looks like, yeah, that looks correct to me. That looks good to me. I'm not going to glue those on. Now, in reality, you don't need to glue these on at all. Uh, some people do put little magnets in there, and that's entirely an option. I could probably quite easily drill that out uh, and stick a magnet on there. I've seen people put very tiny magnets on here and use metal strips. But I'm just going to leave them, because if it's going to get played on the tabletop, it will just sit there. It, it, when you have these on in play, they don't move very often. And when they do, you just pick it up, put it down. They're not going to fall off. They're not going anywhere. They can't just slide off. But it also means it's easier for transport than if I just leave them unmagnetized. For mine anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, it will be double D Day. Dave and Dad says Paul. Ooh, Dad's still cool. Is that confirmed, Paul? Says Paul DiTomaso. I'll watch that. I mean, I'll watch anyway. I love my Sunday morning brunch. Uh, he's glued more than four parts, says Panzer. Do you know? Do you know? You people. If I didn't love you to bits, I don't know. Dan Kramer, we all need to go quiet for a second. Everybody stop what you're doing. I've got some news. Very important news. Stop what you're doing. Dan Kramer says, screw it. I've bought my first Warhammer kit. And he's bought the Torox Prime. Yes. It's a great, it's a great vehicle. There are third party kits to replace the tracks with wheels if you want. But it, even if you don't, it's still a fantastic kit. Lovely, lovely vehicle, that. Good girl. Tempestus Torox Prime. Yeah. Where's mine? I can't get mine out because it's in the cupboard that's behind my stool. But yeah, it's a lovely kit. Uh, Fox likes tanks with hips. Hey, loose hips sink ships. Uh, sure, Fox has built that and I have used many parts of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do like the Tempestus Sounds figures as I love it. I hate building, but I love the way they look. I think the Torox will look cool in the A-Team van colour scheme. See, now you're thinking of portals. Uh, Colin says, yes, it's confirmed when I'm in hospital and I hand over to Dynamic Duo. God help me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Colin's going to into in for his op next week. So, of course, Colin, we wish you the best of uh, best of everything with that. We'll be around once you get out. We'll keep you sane for a little while. But yeah, you're handing it over to, to, to Dave and Dad. Oh, what can possibly go wrong? Right, wrong, even. Yeah, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Don't you worry about it. Uh, uh, when do you actually go in, dude? Is it, what day is it? Tell me offline. Don't tell me in the chat. Send me a little message or something. Remind me. Which day? Uh, congratulations, Dan. One of us, one of us, one of us, says Reggie Modler. Absolutely. Did you video the Torox build? Uh, no, it was a Warhammer Sunday, I think I did it. But I think I painted a lot of it on Warhammer Sunday. I can't remember. I'll do another one in the in the future. But, yeah, I think it was a Warhammer Sunday thing. Uh, nice looking Dan. Is he? I don't know. I've never seen that. I do. He is. I don't think that's what you meant there, was it, Lil? Lil? Lynn, even. I'm talking rubbish now. You, I can tell I've done more than glue more than three things together because I'm talking rubbish and babbling. Uh, okay, so I've got two more of those to do. So what I'll probably do, I'll get them finished later. I'll get them finished probably while I'm watching Chris later on. Uh, it is Chris tonight doing his uh, Warhamster Sunday over on Gross Models, I think, as far as I know. 
and that will be at uh, is it half eight, Chris, or eight? Remind me, eight o'clock, isn't it? Wolfhamster Sunday on eight o'clock on Chris's Gross Models channel. Uh, Dad, are you doing an in-between stream uh, at all at half, quarter past six, or are you not doing one today? <laughs> Uh, Chris did the Torox. Yeah, Chris did a Torox as well. If you want to paint it orange, he has all the information you need. I'll see if I can get, let me get mine out. Hang on. Let me get it out for you. <laughs> it's probably got a layer of dust on it. It's not actually finished. There's a layer of dust. I didn't finish it because um, I've not painted the dude yet. I never got around to painting the figure in there. So I must get around to that at some point. But that's my I did put wheels on it. I got the resin wheel kit. Uh, and at the time I thought it was a great idea, but you know, looking back on it now, I kind of should have stuck with it. At least maybe the tracks on the back. I don't know. But yeah, that was my Torox. I'll probably do most my Xeon Torox. So there's a few Xeon decals on there, and I've added some extra bits. These little backpacks and stuff. These are from the Tempesta Sounds figure set. Uh, I added some of those. There's still a layer of dust on it. Uh, so there are some little accessories and stuff stuck on the side that don't come with the kit. That's just stuff I had lying around. But yeah, no, it's, it's a great little kit. It's great fun to paint. I painted the interior. Full interior paint jobby. Yes. And somehow I managed to make my, my, dude, my lid removable without getting in the way of the dude. Whereas Chris, I think, had trouble with that. You had to glue your figure in place, didn't you? But I've not got the gun on there. See, I've given him the turret with the, the bolters. So he's not got to have his arms outside the, uh, outside the turret. So I got away with that. But I need to give that a dust. It's been in my cabinet. My cabinet's not airtight. So I've got to paint the dude that sits inside. He's not done yet. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's a great little kit. You'll have fun with that. It's a fantastic little build, the Torox. Not complicated and lots and lots of fun. I did do a little tutorial on how to do um, airbrush-free shading, I think, post-shading. And that's when I did it on the, I used some of this on it. So, my idea. Uh, it's not next week unless you know something I don't. We'll let you know. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought. Oh, I'd, apologies, mate. I thought it was actually next weekend that he was uh, doing it with that. But yes. Okay. <laughs> I know nothing that you don't. Eh. Uh, not tonight, is it? His daughter says that. Okay. So now dad's stream tonight. Uh, everybody saying wishing the best, Colin. Yes, I thought. I, I thought it was this weekend they were doing the show, so I guessed it was this week. Cool. That's cooler than I thought, says Dan. Yeah, don't forget, though, it doesn't come with wheels. This is a third-party resin kit with the wheels. Uh, it does come with tracks. Tracks at the back and tracks at the front. So have a look and see what you think. If you fancy doing tracks, I would say personally stick with tracks. Keep the tracks on the back and maybe get the wheel kit for the front. There is a kit where you can get third-party resin tracks that look a bit better. But, yeah, I, I think I, I kind of wish I'd just used the original there. Uh, the original tracks that came with it now would have been a lot easier <laughs> well yeah, yeah it's a, it is a cool looking vehicle you can have a lot of fun with that you can have these doors open uh, again you've got the full interior like i said most people don't bother with that with the interior i just like it on my on my um storm wolf the interior is painted but you can't see it you can open the front but there's no lights but i always paint it because it's kind of nice and it means um i can show it off if i want to uh, that bit is added. I added those straps and that box on the back. So yeah. I'm quite proud of that. That's quite a good little build that. I'll do more in the future though. Uh, where are we up to at chat? I didn't know the top came off. It's not supposed to. You're supposed to glue it in place. But it's just lucky that you can put it on and it, it doesn't have a big panel gap. If you have this guy, he can have a you can have a, a bolter that his hands are holding the gun and it sticks out of the top. You can't do that because you'd have to have his arms glued to him and removable. The only reason I can have this removable is because he's got that bit where his arms are inside. Um, and his arms don't have to stick out, so I can just pop that off. But I think when Chris did it, like I said, he has the guy with his arms sticking out, holding the grips on the twin bolter. So yeah, it's not that possible. So he can't do that. He had to glue his good dude's arms on afterwards. So yeah, I think anyway. But that's my Xeon version. You don't get Xeon decals with it. <laughs> you have some fun with it. But that's that's kind of the color scheme I'm thinking for for my Bane Blade for my Death Core because it's that kind of German grey color. But I don't know yet. I'm not fully sure. That was when I was doing a Principality of Xeon themed army, but I kind of got bored of that. I like the tracks, says Dan. Then go for the tracks. It'd be a lot easier to paint them then. 
I didn't like the tracks that came with the Torox. I picked up a third-party half-track conversion for mine. Probably the same people that I got these from. There are ones where you get wheels and back tracks, or tracks for the back that look better than the Torox ones. So have a look and see. If you like the ones that come with the kit, they're absolutely fine. I did leave the back doors a little open, though, says Chris. Yes, I can't take the top off mine. Yeah, it depends what weapon option you take for the uh, turret. Some people just don't even bother putting the... If you're gluing the, the roof on and you have that back door shut, you don't even need to build the interior or the driver or the guy in the turret because you can have that hatch closed. If you glue that top on, you can't see inside anyway, so you don't even need to put the driver in there. I haven't painted him yet, but you wouldn't theoretically have to put him in there because you can't you can't see in there anyway. Um, depends, but yeah, you'll have some good time with that. Uh, I have seen people... Uh, cut that roof down the middle and have the roof here and that bit open like a half track uh, like a, a, a pickup I think one of the roof options is actually just that half of the roof so you can have the roof here and just have the back open that's also an option fill it with some Tempesta Scions that'd be great yeah if you want to get into figure painting the Scions the dudes the, the Tempesta Scions themselves they are really nice I can't wait to paint mine right swing of coffee mm -hmm. I shall put that there. Uh, I think that's going to do us for today. I've done not that much today, but then cleaning them bolters. It was a bit of a faff, but it has at least shown me what work is involved now. So I know for future when I need to build one of these in the future, or many of these, I know how to pace myself. I know now that I'm probably not going to start building these with all the extra sponsors when I sell them, because I can't be bothered doing four sponsors every time. I just give up the will to live. But a couple of hours to build the sponsor and get them on. That's fine by me. There you go. That's how big that is compared to a Torox. Imagine how big a Torox is to an average SUV. And I'll put the brain blade next to that Torox. <laughs> yeah, it's big, isn't it? Anyway, I think that's going to do us. Chris says he would like to have some rear access. Steady, Neris. That's going to do us uh, for today, I think. I say I'll be back... Um, on, third, on Friday and Saturday, doing some sort of gaming, hopefully Elite, but if not, Fallout and Skyrim. We'll see how it goes, how my controller holds up. Uh, so I shall see you at the very earliest, or the very latest, on Friday. I'll see if I can do something during the week. I will try and get some of the um, Lehman Rust done if I can. But remember, there's no E-Model show tomorrow night, though, so we're not, we're not, we won't see you tomorrow night. Uh, one of us, I'm sure, might do some streaming tomorrow night instead. I don't know yet. Anyway. That's going to do me. So thank you very much for watching. My hooks aren't straight. Damn it. Never mind. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, of course, if you want to support this channel, and uh, please consider it. It really helps me a lot. Helps this channel keep going. Please do consider becoming a patron or a channel member, either by going to patreon.com forward slash model making guru, or by simply clicking the join button at the bottom of any one of my videos. Either way, uh, you'll be supporting the channel directly. You'll be paying my wages and keeping the lights on and food on my table, meaning I can keep doing this for my living. Uh, and of course, you'll get access to a video content early, a week early in advance with no adverts for a lot of the content. So that's one of the one of the perks and bonuses. So do consider becoming a patron or a, a channel supporter, YouTube member. Don't forget, of course, you can uh, support me by going to my Amazon stores. Links down below in the description for my Amazon Canada, US and UK stores. Uh, basically, if you're going on Amazon to buy something, use one of those links. It, uh, I get some income from that. It costs you nothing. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. And if you need something adding that's not there, all model making stuff and things like that, if you need something adding, just give me a shout. I can add it for you in seconds. So do check out my stores. And don't forget, of course, to like and subscribe as always. But anyway, I shall see you all later on this evening at 8 o'clock on Chris's channel, Gross Models, for his show. Uh, until then, I shall say thank you very much for watching. I'll make sure uh, my buttons are still working. Ted, my buttons still working. It on. Yeah, my buttons still work. I shall say, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go to um, 9001 Ostrich. He says, be a member like me, like me. Yes, be like Ostrich. Be a member. He's a good member. Uh, as is Wendy as well. And Gross Models. Uh, and B3 and all the others. So thank you very much to them. Yes, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Don't go out unless you need to. If you do need to go out, wear a mask. Uh, and until next time, I shall say, take care of yourselves. Adios, amoebas.